when you have breakthrough on the other side, that's usually where you get the most resistance from. Just trials, tribulations, man, culture. A lot of things are up against you. You feel like the worries of the world are on you, but that's just kind of spiritual resistance for where God has you and where he's about to bring you. Pornhub is one of the number one most sex trafficked website that there is. Yes. Like you never know if you're watching a woman or a child that looks like an adult is being sex trafficked in that video. Yeah. And I, I was so sick. When I first got saved, I was like, why me? Like, okay, what about me? And like, I believed it for everybody else. Like, mm. you know, I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know that the Lord can save anybody, like anybody. I was just kind of praying and he had prayed over me and said, you think that what the Lord's doing right now is crazy, what he see, what he does next. I don't want to be the weird one that's out of my chair at the altar worshiping. I want to be the weird one for not being at the altar. Let's start the show. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing us here today, Lord. And I pray that you use our stories to bring people closer to you, God, and that you speak through us tonight. Lord, You've granted us with so many opportunities since we've been saved. Yes, Jesus. And I'm so glad to start our journey here. Just speak through us and let the conversation be natural. I love you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Bless Father, up. Yeah, Father God, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Amen. <laughs> we give an entire room hey. for him to show up. There we go. We learning something at Thread, huh? Yeah, <laughs> just a little it. bit, huh? <laughs> That's beautiful. Hey, uh, I sound good back there, Taylor, in the mic. Can you turn me up in the headphones just a little bit? I appreciate you, How's Taylor. that? That sounds beautiful. How, I do, how do I sound? Wonderful. <laughs> Are we all supposed to ask? Hey, I sound all, good. Hey, hey, audience, how do we sound? Give us, give us a comment. Let us know where you're listening from if we sound good, too. Oh, there we go. All right, there. We got the little magic dust there. All right, cool. Yes. We got the magic mind little vibe on there. All right, cool beans. We're here. We're live in the studio. It's a pleasure to be here. I want to introduce two of my guests. It's been a while since we've had two guests. Yeah. And it's exciting to have two guests like yourselves. Y'all are two best friends. <laughs> oh, too good. Two roommates that are on fire for the Lord. That are, that are burning for him, that are just adding logs to the fire. You know, you uplift me with joy every time we have an interaction and a conversation at church. Aww. And your enthusiasm for uh, our ministry has been a true blessing. So I thank you both for that. And your support has been overwhelming to the point where I felt like the Lord just definitely said, you know, invite them on. Let's hear from them. Let's see what yeah. they got going on in their life. And uh, it's just going to be a, a special time. I'm super yeah. geeked up. I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, I am, me too. <laughs> I am ready to go. I, I feel like this has been a super filled day of uh, Jesus encounters. And uh, it's like crazy because we're, we're being taught in our culture right now at Thread what that looks like. And yes. uh, it's being emphasized. And I feel like it's getting more and more clarity of what Daily Encounters actually is. Hmm. And um, it's been powerful. So Savannah yeah. May, you were across from me. We got we got Miss Taylor Clink Scales next to me as well. Okay, yeah, there I we know. go. Got it. I, it. I, you know, I, I gotta say it's slow sometimes, just so I yeah. can you know pronunciate. You but practice it in the mirror. I know, Taylor right? Clink Scales. <laughs> Bro, your name is hard. I can't lie. <laughs> For some reason, it's like a tongue twister. Have you experienced that from like substitute teachers or what? Uh, uh, everybody. I had a teacher that knew me my whole life. She still don't say my name. <laughs> For real? Yeah. It's so embarrassing. It's so sad. Like pre-K. Pre-K? <laughs> Dang. Gosh. She really holding out. Yeah. That's wild. All right. What about you, Savannah? You've had it easy pretty much your whole life with the names, huh? Well, I didn't always go by Savannah May. My, no no my normal name is Savannah Halsey. Like wow, I didn't know that. But that's my government name. Yeah. All so right. when I wear, because I work at a correctional facility, so I have to wear my last name. And I get called Hazley, Hossy, Hall, Holly. I'm like, how, first of all, how you get Holly? That blows my mind every time. Or I get, like the singer? <laughs> Dude, can you sing like her? I'm like, no. If I did, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Let's be real. So you would be at I like birds. Now you too big for I like birds. No, nah, she wouldn't be at the jail. <laughs> I wouldn't be at the jail. <laughs> Literally. Wow. Oh, and then you'd have a famous person on that. Like I know. Right? Then, yes, you, know? you would. Wow. Yeah, Halsey. She needs the Lord. Let's hey, be real. Hey, you want to know something? Fun fact. Her name is actually Ashley. 
Yeah, it and is. And then she changed it to Halsey. So I'm really the OG here, for being for real. Wow. But I give it to her. She could sing. All right. So. And you're Savannah May now. I I'm love Savannah to hear May. Yeah. Is May your middle name? No, it's actually my stepfather's name, last name. Oh, that's sweet. Kind of, after my mom passed and everything, she kind of took care of me. So oh. and it's easy to say. So kept it. Wow. All right. Yeah. Well, I love that. And that's a super uh, honoring to him, I feel like. And does he yeah. cherish that? Yeah. I mean, especially when it came to sports, he loved being able to wear his name on the back of a shirt. Like, yeah. that's my girl. So hey, I love that. Speaking of shirts, yo, can we get some love yes. for the Jesus Ooh. One shirt? Oh. This That's is the actually, first thing I said to you, I think. Yeah, he <laughs> they did. need to make those and everyone wear them to a Texas Rangers game. I think so. And if you actually want to, you can get one from my buddy uh, Sly Stemley and Ken Butler, who are with FCA. Mm -hmm. the, the shirts are 20 bucks. We'll say 30 so the other 10 can go to I Like Birds. Yeah, and amen. <laughs> <laughs> Slide that in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> Put really? a little promo spot, you know? Yeah, yeah. You just should have just started with 30. That's 30, I know. Yeah. But I had to be honest, you know what I mean? I had to be like, it is 20, but like, you know, 10 for the for, yeah. the, for the boy that's bringing you to. 10 for yeah. the advice. You're the one letting us know. I so. know. You know, on cam, self promotion, you know? It's, uh, it's all for Jesus, though. Yes. You know? <laughs> but I was excited when the Rangers won. I, me and my wife, we jumped up and down in the living room. Because it felt like, you know, a big move of God was happening in Texas. And I feel yeah. like, oh yeah, uh, you know, sports sometimes is symbolic of that, of what's going on, you know, in the spirit in some kind of capacity, you know, is, mm -hmm. uh, especially because they were the only organization that didn't participate in like a lot of the left that's woke, what I heard. woke organization mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, they didn't back down from it. No. So that's honestly, I think a lot what the Jesus one uh, came from was because yeah. of the baseball player that wore the shirt after fact. And next mm -hmm. thing you know, it's like he's putting his faith on full display, mm -hmm. but it's symbolic because also Jesus won when he conquered death. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, and he so wrote good. and he resurrected, you yes. know, so yeah. He, we're winning. We're on the winning team, even though we might feel like we're on the visiting team sometimes. Hey, we got we got eternity. <laughs> That's right. That's it. Yes. <laughs> we'll be with him for a we while. We can struggle now. <laughs> Have success later. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the storm, man. The storms get real of life, but uh, that's that spiritual resistance. I'm learning that. You know, it's when when God, when you have breakthrough on the other side, uh, that's usually where you get the most, you know, resistance from just trials, tribulations, man, yeah. culture. <clears throat> a lot of things are up against you. You feel like the worries of the world are on you, but that's just kind of spiritual resistance for where God has you and where he's about to bring you. Uh -huh. You got to get stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all been saved for how long? What about Savannah? How long have um, you been saved? Five months. Five months? Yeah. Yeah. Taylor? Just about... Um... September-ish. Y'all got saved around the same time? Yeah. Um, um, you're I like, if my best friend gets saved, I get saved too. So she started going to church before me. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think us but, being together and holding each other accountable, it was it's a lot easier to step in. Yeah. Like, into actually doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to fix your mic. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you tell me where I need to be. There you go. That looks better. You need to see more face. No, yeah. Um, June 18th was... First day I ever went to a church, I went to Mercy Culture. I had okay. some friends invite me. The night before that, I got drunk, and I was like, <laughs> I'll wake up early enough. I can do that. <laughs> uh, but, no, I went, and Lily wrecked me. So as I walked really? into the door, cried. Like, Then you got drunk in the spirit? Uh, yes. You were like, this was way different than last night. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, why did I feel like this last night? having more fun now. Than <laughs> Literally. And it's... um. It was crazy. And they had a guest speaker, and really what he preached on was um, he was talking about son to father and father to son. So it really was, he was kind of more directing towards the men of the house. But before he started that, he had said, the Lord told me that this is for someone that needs to hear this today. And he brings this whole bag, and he dumps it, and it's all these sports jerseys that he's ever worn. Mm. And he's like, what jersey were you wearing, like, your senior year? Or, like, and sports is like a big I was, when my mom died, that was like something I like went into. I was like, it was toxic. It wasn't even like healthy. And I just, when he was talking like that, I was like, I wore the jersey of feeling like I wasn't good enough for anyone. Or I wore the jersey of doing unthinkable things I shouldn't be doing at age 16 or whatever. And it really just, he said, trade that and give it to God. And he just will, he, it's like NFL, trade it. <laughs> and you're going to get all the blessings, all this, all this fame from just the glory of God. Wow. And that day I was like, <laughs> my life has changed. I was like, and I was still doing like little things like cursing and stuff like that. Didn't really know much. Still drinking too. Still yeah. drinking. Mm -hmm. like. But I was like, yeah, I'm changing it. 
Yeah, and you and you and the Lord convicts where He wants to convict. You oh know, yeah, it's not going to be a it, one fell swoop of like every yes. sin falls off of me. Yes. No, every chain falls off of me. That's but not that'd be how it easy, works. huh? <laughs> that'd be too but easy. I will say, from my experience, and I've been thinking about this a lot this week, it was one thing that I thought I could never go over, my, get over myself. I could never surrender it myself. Mm-hmm. And that was pornography. And once that got oh. kind of that chain broke, mm-hmm. it was almost like I saw the power in in what what Jesus is the deliverer of sin in. And that's crazy because that I was addicted to porn. You too. It, I was. I probably was introduced to that like my eighth grade year. And I would I'd watch porn like <laughs> really bad. Like it'd be a few times a day. Even when I was in relationships, if I didn't, eat, I would just watch porn like. And it's actually crazy uh, because the next day on Monday, he had said, um, his name is Jacko Boyens. I can never say it right. But he uh, had a documentary that he had made about sex trafficking. And it was on Monday. I called into work. So I said, I'm not missing it. Like, I felt called to go. And mm. literally the first thing that this documentary is about, and, like, he has people on it, like, real survivors and, like, stuff, was Pornhub is one of the number one most sex trafficked website that there is. Yes. Like, you never know if, if you're watching a woman or a child that looks like an adult is being sex trafficked in that video. Yeah. And I I was so sick. Yeah. And that's I think the day I gave up. You called me that day. Oh, yeah. I and called that, her. And I stopped I said, watching porn that day, too. Yeah. The day that she told me about that. Wow. And I, but yeah, I said, I'm laying that down. That yeah. I got called to come here for a reason. I needed to hear that. And that's why. Because mm-hmm. I still would have kept watching it. Wow. If I didn't probably hear that sermon. Yeah, because it's and, con- it's convicting and it's like it, it yeah. turns your stomach inside out. Yeah, I get so sick even thinking about it anymore. I'm just like. I know, it's terrible. Like we were. Yeah. We were so deep into that and just like and enjoying mm-hmm. it. That's the part that's like crazy. Yeah. Is that we were in it and enjoying it. Yes. Yeah, because uh, it's, it's like it's what the enemy does. It's like there's kind of like there's goodness that God makes and then the, the enemy like uses it for just ill intent. Of like Mm -hmm. what God designed it for, you Mm -hmm. know, and it's designed for marriage, it's designed for pleasure, it's designed for love and intimacy and unity as a as a couple. But then when you when you show all the other fruits of that, what you think is all those other trees, Mm -hmm. it's like, no, that's not the right fruit. You're you're leaning into something that is perverse, and it's almost like I really do think of it as the tree concept of it, you know, Mm because once you choose this tree, it's almost like you you surrender so many of the other things that were kind of keeping you bound, even from. The way you uh, interact with people and the way you yeah. look at people that are of the uh, opposite sex or the sex you're into, mm-hmm. and it and it and it progresses into a place of like you get deeper into <clears throat> it to the point where like what used to satisfy you doesn't satisfy you anymore. No, that's you're literally so correct. Like, yeah, there's been so many times that I think we we it come up in conversation like, hmm, wonder what it'd be like if we had threesome. Like, because you see that all the time, or like, or, or even just like, that yeah. you watch same sex porn. Yeah. For, and yeah. like, like you it's know. normal in the in that like metaverse yeah. of yeah. your mind of like when you're yeah. in, in when you're entrapped in that in that bondage of mm-hmm. and also a lot of it is unawareness because it was so uh, propagated and pushed our way and acceptable and free and mm-hmm. uh, right, yeah. you know it's honestly our parents did not handle it well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they did not know how to, uh, steward that ship into the, the correct direction. Yeah. Uh, there was not conversations that were probably had about it with many, many households and families. Mm-hmm. And that just leads to, uh, children thinking that it's okay to yeah. partake in that from a young age. And then once they get introduced to it, it's almost like, how could I ever turn yeah. away from this without the power of Christ? Yeah. Or even yeah. you don't know how to ask for help. Because you know it's something that you're not supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. And it's like, and I mean, the Lord really sent me this thing because I've been asked to step into the 6 to 12 class. And the Lord was like, teach them about porn. And I'm like, uh, how do I teach this, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so like, I brought it to Brenda today and I was like, uh, the Lord told me to teach these kids about porn like, <laughs> and the dangers of porn because I have four yeah, brothers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All of who have watched porn when they were young. Wow. And so, um, sorry, I'll just blast them on. <laughs> sorry. But that, I mean, that comes up. My mom didn't know how to bring it up. No. Like, you know, yeah. you don't know how yeah. to. Mm-hmm. And so I just remember just crying and weeping in one of my encounters. And I'm like, I'm supposed to teach children about porn. <laughs> like, how is, like, that's a big ask, you well, know? Well, maybe, it, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe that's like one of the branches, but I don't know. Yeah. I feel like maybe there's. Brenna said it's. 
she said lean into purity yeah, instead no. of going straight. Tra- yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm way the more Lord just comfortable. Gave her like a topic. But no, he said, right. but- Bring it to your pastor and let them help. Yeah, help no, no, you no. Yeah, I asked this. Brenna. I asked Brenna, and she yeah. was like, yeah, lean into into purity. And I was like, oh yeah, I would really love to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that seems like such a less ask than like teach six year olds about porn. Yeah, because that, that <laughs> could like, be yeah, that could be definitely clipped up out of context. So no, please, for please sure, don't I ever- don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not sitting here like I can't wait to teach six year olds about. porn. But it's just like being obedient to the Lord, but like not knowing how to articulate it, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. And to, when I asked so, Brenna, she's like, "Yeah, lean in, lean into um, importance of purity." And I'm like, "Oh, thank God." Yeah, Brenna's just thank wise. God. Her like, wisdom just came yeah. out. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I do not. I don't want to do that." I was like, "Lord, is there any other way?" Yeah, any yeah. other way for sure. And Speak, he was, and he sent yeah. me away. So we're good. We're going okay. purity culture instead. Of <laughs> yeah. There we go. And I love that. And I love that you're open and honest about that, especially so early on in this episode, because I do feel yep. like it's an issue that uh, we think men only struggle with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. That, but, and I think that's because you don't talk about your about it to your daughters either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because a, you don't think about it. Right. And it's and I, and I for the first time I had somebody kind of open up to me that was of the opposite sex about it with somebody. Uh, in my family and shared that she was struggling with it. And I was like, so taken aback. Cause I was like, I didn't know girls did that. You know, it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah. pooping. I didn't know y'all did that either. Well, I yeah. mean, totally you don't think girls life. are, girls are watching porn when there's girls participating. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, and maybe that was just my own, was definitely my own ignorance. But at the same time, I, I mm-hmm. it was almost like I was in my own little bubble of just like, you know, thinking it was only, it was something that was only happening to me, you know, and mm-hmm. like I was the only one. So, you know, mm-hmm. you, get, you get very isolated in that. So once Jesus broke the chains of that, though, I started to literally feel freedom in so many other ways of my life to the point where I felt like I was able to walk with him in a way that felt like I was honoring him. I was obeying him Mm -hmm. and I was leaning into his righteousness and I was listening to his word in a way that Mm -hmm. was having such spiritual weight on my heart that all the physical sins started to just kind of fall off of me in that arena. And then once I saw that he could do it for me, I knew he can do it for other people. Oh, yeah. The testimony of Jesus. The testimony Literally. of Jesus. Literally. And I, I talk about this, you know, uh, seldomly on this podcast, but episode four of the podcast is about that. It's about that honesty and that opening up of it. And I think that kind of episode let our audience know that tuned in, like, oh, this is going to be a real honest, vulnerable Christian walk that I get to kind of hear and kind of walk through. And I got a lot of really great feedback on that because it opened up the eyes of a lot of our viewers that were struggling with that, learning and knowing that uh, Jesus is the only way out. Yeah. And that's where that's where it became more of like, yeah, you you may be struggling with this, but here's a solution. Yeah. You know what I mean? And bringing that to the people was, was really powerful. So this is good stuff. We're going to we're going to dive a little bit deeper. If uh, you're watching live, let us know where you're watching from. Hey, tune uh, in. Let us know. Yeah, where you at? Where you at? Where you listening from? We got we got <laughs> seven people watching right now. Let's at go. Least on the little... Lucky seven. There My grandma might be one of those and she probably doesn't know how to call me. <laughs> uh, she got no faith in granny over here. <laughs> you should have seen her during the login. <laughs> she likes to send a screenshot. She says, is this it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. And I did want to... Blum, Texas. Hey, there we go, Marissa. Thanks for tuning in today. Hey, Marissa. Good and faithful Blum. Let's go. Let's go. How you doing? Hey, no way, me too. <laughs> Literally. That's awesome. We were building some shelves for the nursery. It was yeah. fun. Oh, look at you guys ser- <laughs> serving the tr- church and serving the Lord. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Kingdom work. Yeah. Um, before we get we dive any deeper, because I know we're going to go deeper, I did want to show some love to our friends at Magic Mind. They are a uh, sponsor of our show, and they are incredible. I would love for you guys to actually participate in drinking one of them. If you ever oh, find wow. yourselves in Whole Foods, it's amazing. You can get one at Whole Foods. It's like a little shot. Like people are like so reliant on energy drinks right now. Yeah. Like so many people. I was at a warehouse today. I saw Red Bulls and everything. And I'm like, bro, you got to get magic mind because this is like all natural it has everything that you need basically all your greens in one shot to Mm -hmm. give you a nice little energy boost and you know me and my wife were all about that non-toxic natural ingredients i love that that. vibe and it's so cool because uh we're a fan of their product and we're a fan of what they're they're doing and it helps us also save money by not buying as many coffees and as many red bulls and stuff like that so it's super great We, we got a subscription for it and i highly recommend you get one too you can get 56% 56% off from now until 10 days of this airing uh, at magicmind.com slash birds. 56% yes. off. It's incredible. That's crazy. And then they also gave me a promo code for the real ones. Let's go for the real ones. Just put birds20 in the promo code. Yes. 
Let's and you go. get seventy six percent off total. Like how Orange incredible 20. is that? So we're gonna order it just twenty. Yeah, yeah I'll get that. It. You know, so maybe drop fire. Drop that link, uh, Taylor Magicmind dot com slash birds in the chat for the people that hey, are Daisy, interested in I that. I see you, girl. I see we you, see Daisy. You. We see you, Daisy. We see you, Greg. Let's go. Let's go, Greg. <laughs> Dallas, Texas. That's awesome. Yes. Granbury, Texas. Man, we're we're Texas heavy right now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Let us see it. Let I, us hey, see let it. me just. Blum, Texas. Where are we from? Where are we at? We yeah. can tell by the accent. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, this is nothing. You should meet everybody else at listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard man. a small town and like um really uh, they struggle with a lot of um um narcotics. And oh. just yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You heard I'm, that? You heard that? <laughs> that's, 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 funny. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Marissa said represent. <laughs> uh, we represent the good parts, not the bad parts. Yeah, right. Oh. We're saved by grace. Saved by grace. Speaking of grace, let, let's dive in here. Let's dive okay. in here. Mm, I got, let's go. I got some. I got some things that I want to talk about. Yeah. All right. And one of those things is you mentioned Savannah, um, mm-hmm. and I think this is just like this is heavy. You know, you mentioned your mom passing. Yeah. Um, and I and it was interesting. I was looking for your name on Instagram one day and I couldn't find it. And it was because mm-hmm. like, your name on there was Rip Mama, and I was like, Oh yeah, the little. Yeah. Yeah. And that like kind of hurt that like that hit me in my heart because it was just like, man, she loved her mom so much that she's like changing her name to that on yeah, yeah. on socials. And um, so I have to ask you, like, what was that? What was that like? What was that? What, what, was, what was the process of grief going through that as well as like how did God kind of pull you out of that that loss and that hurt and that what, what some people would make them turn away from God? How did God restore you in a way that even though you lost your mom, you were still able to find your heavenly father? So it's kind of crazy. I haven't shared the story since I posted my testimony, but I actually had an encounter with the Lord when I was 11 and I didn't know what it was at the time. Now I'd know because, um, so she got sick and everything and my real dad lives from Houston. So, and they didn't want me around to like see her like that, you know, so they sent me with my dad to Houston. So I wasn't even there when she passed. But it was the night before, and it was like maybe like eleven at night, and I start my whole body starts shaking. I'm like I'm literally like this. I was with a friend, and I look at her. She's like, "You okay?" I said, "I don't I don't not know what just happened to me. We we're literally having so much fun." Like, and I wasn't like a sick shake. It was just like I literally started shaking. So I was like, something was just telling me to call my mom. Like, and at this point of her sickness, she couldn't even speak. Like she's literally just on a bed. So I call and my uncle answers and I'm like, is mom there? Can I speak to her? You know, whatever. And he took a long time, but finally she was still alive. So he gave her the phone and everything. And she literally got to say that she loved me. Mm. And then that morning, about three in the morning, she passed away. Wow. So like, I got a chance to say goodbye. And so, and that's a lot for 11 year old to like, at first I said, I didn't even understand what was happening. So when I found out the next day, like they, my dad had came picked me up from my friend's house and it was like 10 in the morning and I'm away in Houston. So we had to drive all the way back to Blum. And I was like, it's like, I was still, I was still in denial. Like I didn't, I wasn't crying. Wasn't like, I was like, I don't know. It won't be real tight to see it basically. Mm. So we get there and we get into the house and like, everything's gone already. Like hospital bed, obviously her and like everything's just like gone. And I like, that's when it really hit me to think that I have to walk into my house every day and not see her. And growing up, my mom was like my basketball coach, like her and my stepdad, they like coached me for basketball and all that. So honestly, I just really went heavy into sports. Like, and I ate a lot. I also got really, I got into eating, which I didn't know was a problem until after I got, I graduated that it was a problem, but I would eat a lot and got into sports but then it came to a point where sports was like some people would use that as my mom dying as a lever to make me better and like manipulate me and like you know your mom's watching you she's proud of you but you kind of need to step up type of thing like wow and it really just and I didn't realize that's what was happening you know yeah. but um it was never really easy at home. Like, my stepdad kind of got into drinking. It hit him really hard. Like, that's the woman that he loved, you know. And they just got married and everything. And so he was getting, into, like, bad relationships. And then it was causing issues at home. Me running away. I literally ran to my 
boyfriend at 14 years old because I was so miserable, but <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> and, um, like, and I just remember, like, one time it was so bad with one of the people he was with. And I was like, if I died, if I killed myself, he probably wouldn't even care. And I was like, I didn't feel like part of the family. Like, and she had a daughter that lived there. So it's just like, mm. I was just, I felt like I was literally a Cinderella, like yeah. literally. And that's how I describe it most of the time. Cause I literally walk into my room one day and they had went in there and dumped all my clothes out all over my bedroom floor out of all my dressers and everything. Cause I left one load of laundry in the dryer. And I was an athlete, and I was driving to school at the age of 14 with that permit. Like, yeah, because, you're doing a lot of grown yeah, stuff. Yeah, because like, like, my dad was just such, he worked nights, he was busy. I was, so I was like, I have to go to sports. Like, I have to, this is what I'm doing. And like, the school at that point was like, we need her more than we don't. So, like, they were letting me drive to school without a permit. Like, yeah, because we all had parking passes. Yeah, we had to get parking <laughs> passes. And so, when the cop would come and check on that, it was like, Dismiss the Dodge because that's someone that we're letting drive illegally up here. Wow. And, um, yeah, but it really just, the Lord <laughs> protected me because I was, like I said, I was already having sex in eighth grade. I had no guidance. I was already partying. Like, my stepdad kind of, like, he had, like, he was, like, he knows what was going on, but not to the point where, like, I was getting punished or, like, grounded. We're, like, more, like, best friends than we were a uh, daughter and yeah. father like and he just that's that was a lot for him to take on he wasn't ready to take on a whole kid like by he, himself you know by himself yeah. especially not a girl like <laughs> like that's a lot and so i just basically did whatever i wanted i had literally been making bad decisions at the age of 14 and like i said i had sex eighth grade and wow probably had, had sex ever ever since after that like you know and that's kind of when i got into the porn and then I kind of thought like older boys was like, like any issue. Like I had, it just happened. Like I just did all this stuff and I would get so drunk all the time. And I should have been pregnant basically. Like I should have been pregnant or somehow I would drink and drive. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like the glory of God. Yeah, you were living like, in the world. Yeah. I was living in the world. Yeah. And yeah. And so it's about my senior year. I had like really rust. I was like, this is not it. Like I quit sports. I was like, I'm ready to get out of school. Like I was already, I was dreading sports at this point. I, I my coach made me basically hate being there. Like I hated sports at that point. Yeah. When, and, when does the Lord come in? I know you went to mercy culture, but when does he kind of like wreck you into understanding that like the way you were living was. Yeah. Um, for sure. Probably it was gosh, literally like in Jul June or July is when, and you're how old? Twenty um, three. I'm twenty three now. Yeah. Okay. So, and so, that's the first time she ever well, stood foot in a church. Really? Yeah, no, that's wow. no, she didn't yeah. grow up in the church at all. Okay, first experience in a yeah, church. Yeah, but wow. what really, House what really, really got yeah. it was I was in this really, Crazy. really toxic relationship for like a little bit, almost a year. Been there. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> if it was I, rough. I would literally like we couldn't even we couldn't even be on speaking terms. I couldn't even talk to her. Like that's really? how bad it was. Yeah, wow. for a whole year we probably didn't talk at all. Y'all, y'all met each other when? We and went to school, school together. Yeah. What age? Like, uh, y'all connect. She, or about fifteen, fourteen. Well, when we connected, it was we were After probably like school. twenty, like yeah, 19, 20. twenty. Okay. Because like we had you know drama. That's just what girls do in school. Yeah, yeah drama. At we first. had different friend groups, so people tell them different things. So we weren't really close no, in high we school. Y'all were beefing. <laughs> A little bit. A little bit. But that's how the best that's how the best friendship starts. Oh, that yeah, is, yeah, like, then you know I hated you, but like I love you. Yes, <laughs> yes. And so like I blessed, like I'm so blessed for Taylor. And oh, she really man. swooped in, like it was literally a random night where I was, I was like, what are you doing? Like, we don't ever yeah, talk, but what we, are you doing? We, we, yeah, you be not... texting my wife, you up at like 8 o'clock. Dude, yes. I love Catherine, man. But <laughs> no, love... she be, I have to, she has to help me. I'm like, this, taking over this like new, new leadership of <laughs> the nursery. I'm like, girl, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Can you tell me what to do? No. You text her, you up at like 7. Yeah. I'm like, they are not old. Like... I go to bed at 7. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's why she, she texts everybody you up at 7.30 because that. that's when I go to sleep. Yeah, she'd be going to bed early. So really? I'm like, I have to. I get up at 3.30 in the morning. For what? I don't... The uh, uh, No. The Lord called me to do my encounters before. He wants my first 10%. And I have to be at work at 5.40. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. He asked for my first 10. He's crazy, and I'm like, man. you sure you want that? 
<laughs> yeah, you want this groggy version yeah, of Elon? Yeah, I'm like, like, I chug a bottle of water and I'm like, okay. Hey, you need some magic ready? mind. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'll be up all day. But no, it was uh, one night we had got drunk, me and the boy boyfriend at the time. And I was so to the point, I was like, I'm about to kill myself. I literally told myself, I was good. This sounds very dramatic and it sounds very just silly. But I was like, I was, I was so drunk, like I was so plastered. Yeah, I don't even, drunk. I don't even know how I made it. But I, I lived next to a river, and I really, literally ran down there. And I was gonna like just let myself drown, basically, because it's also really cold. So I was like, hypothermia. I'm drunk. I'll die. I'll just drown. You know, whatever. Like you gonna throw yourself in the river? Oh yeah, yeah. I was about to. I was like, get, I was running down there. I got like near the water, and then I just something just shocked me and was like called. Call someone that cares about you. And the first oh. person I was was Taylor. I was like, and and she literally, like, she went through so much with me and that guy. Like, she had no reason to talk to me anymore. Like, that's how bad it was. But she knew, like, re- she, real recognized, real vote. Yeah. Going on and she's out with friends and she answered my phone call. That's sweet. I always answer. Yeah. You can call me anytime I'll answer. Yeah. She answered, though. And I, you I can know, hear she's I know out. what it's like, though, to have me that one phone call. Mm-hmm. Yes. And. I was like, Taylor, I, I want to kill myself. I don't know what else to do. And I felt like I was so stuck in this relationship because I had nothing. Like, And it's just, I never really understood the whole how people can stay in abuse relationships or like, how could, how can you do that until, until you get experience it? And it's like, you literally can't leave it. Like, you just feel like so attached to them in such a toxic way that that's your person for life, basically. And she was like, First, you need to calm down. You need to leave him tomorrow. Like, literally, just, you got to get out of there. And I still didn't. I still stayed. I did say I love you. mm -hmm. I'm drunk. I can't come get you. Yeah, no, she did But don't jump in the river. Yeah, I was like, I love you. I I said, I love you. I'm really drunk. Like, I I can try to find someone that can come pick you up. Like, I'll call my mom. Mm -hmm. And I was like, she could come get you. I know she would. And she was like, I'm going to call my sister. And I was like, okay, you better text me when you call your sister. Like, yeah, tell yeah. me the truth. <laughs> like, and then my dad come looking for me. So and that was. So I call her back a few minutes later and she's like, I'm with Rex. So I was like, okay, he's not. She put his name out there and everything. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, I mean, everybody knows who her dad is. <laughs> I'm my dad. My dad, Rex. Oh, I'm we call sorry. Him I thought, I thought yeah. you were talking about, about Oh, no, buddy. no, 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 no. I don't know. His name's Crush Fur. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> he might be tuning in. We, let's be real. But is he, he still he obsessed should. with Brian Carey? He's still obsessed with you? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Oh. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, um, but yeah, so. We're now, working on him, actually. Yeah, we've, we've been uh, sharing the gospel. With him. We've been there sharing it. We've been sharing. I've been. The Lord really kind of took that into it and kind of is like, because he does come from, I'm not sure, Cody, he comes from a bad home. Like, and abuse leads a, to more abuse and mm-hmm. trauma leads to more trauma. Like hurt having, people, hurt having, to, having to live fight for his mother like life like it's that it was that bad wow. so i just pulled a little talk, like a lot of sympathy for him it's mm-hmm. just i couldn't stay with him yeah as like it i was left yeah. it wasn't healthy i was like i was like i really pray for you and i i i can't explain how much that jesus will like will save you mm-hmm. and he's kind of like yeah are you crazy sure well you know you but sure? i sent him i sent him the link so we'll see i don't know Wow. He might be offended, but it's okay. That's his flesh. It's, it's the <laughs> truth, though. Like, I'm not lying about anything, you know? It's like, that was our story. It wasn't good. And, well, one night he, <laughs> I was crying or whatever, kicked me out of the room for crying because he don't like to listen to me cry. <laughs> and so right then I was like, yeah, I know someone will care for me better than this. And so I finally left him. And That was the best phone call of my life. No, I literally, like, I had... Saved enough money to leave him, like, without telling Because I was having to pay for stuff, like, all kinds of stuff while I was working. And I had just enough saved up. Called my sister, come pick me up. And I went and bought a cheap old Nissan car. I said, Taylor, I got a car. I'm out. She's like, I don't know. Huh? You sure? It's like the 10th time. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> I was like, no, like, I'm doing it. I did it. I got a car. I have no money now. It went all to the car. I said, but I got out. I did it. And then I was getting kind of more drunk most of the time, hanging out with friends or ex-boyfriends, other, other not him, but some other yeah, guy. But you. yeah. And yeah, that. Young 20s. I was like, yeah, I was like, why am I so you should just desperate? Skip that I was so desperate for attention. And like, so I was on like Bumble and Tinder, like. Christian Mingle? No. Farmer's Meat? 
No. But yeah. We already met all the farmers around us. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, they, all, <laughs> they all broke our heart. No. <laughs> oh, man. Nice, Taylor. Yeah, he's killing nice. it. He's, he's killing, killing it. Back he's there, killing yeah. it. Um, but no, so. Um, yeah, there was just my friend Abby had said, hey, Liberty kind of wants us to come to Mercy Culture. Um, and she's been wanting to go, but she's she's been nervous to go alone. I mean, it's a big place. And. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's a baby Christian, and I'm a baby Christian. Or I was even a Christian, but she's like, you know, wanting to get into she's it. She's dabbling. And I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, I never been to church. So I'll try it out. And then that, but that night, literally, I said I got drunk and I was at chances till like two in the morning, and I woke up, still went. But yeah, and then that's just when Lord basically spoke to me, and he's like, yeah, mm, give me that, give me that jersey you have on. Of you want this attention, I'll give you attention if you give me all your attention. And so, mm. glory to him. He just, he took my jersey right off my back. He's like, mm. wow. and here I am. And, and, and then from there, it was just a complete, like, 180? Or is like a, um, it's a slow. hunger for him? It's slow? Okay. It was slow. Yeah. Like I said, I was still kind of drinking. Yeah. And then um, I was still cursing. And then um, September 3rd is my birthday. And we were trying to think of what we're going to do as People that just gave their life to the Lord for my birthday. We're for used our birthdays. To, we're used to going out getting like, drunk uh, and celebrating each other. Bonfires with 400 people are not an option anymore. No, that's literally, we had a party for her and it was like 400 people showed up. Yeah, at my her 20th property. birthday party. Some girl was like, who are you? I was like, this yeah. is my house. This is 400 like, people? No. It, no, someone that's shared what, it. Shared yeah. it. And then they it was like. Kept, they just kept coming up. Uh, and we were car- charging gate fee and every, everything. Everything. People were still showing up. I was, I was passing out jello shots. Paying, hey, $3 jello shot. People were paying that. Wow. And it's crazy. Don't that. do that. Don't we're do not that. We don't. Do not. Do <laughs> not. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Sorry. We repent. <laughs> we're, not, we're not sharing that as advice. We're just <laughs> yeah, no, it's part of the story and part of the testimony. Yeah. And then so from there, so how did you celebrate your birthday then? So I, <laughs> this is crazy. So I was on my email and here goes Marcy Culture. We'll listen now newsletter, a uh, newsletter. And it was, they're doing baptisms on my birthday. Oh. And I was like, automatically I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, I need to get baptized. Like, no, no question about it. And so we went, and we actually, it was a Sunday we missed that thread because it was on a Sunday. So mm-hmm. I was like, Taylor, I, I'm going to get baptized. I think this is going to like completely actually be my turnaround. Like, it's just going to be so, so real. So we signed up or me and my friend Abby had signed up and our friend Gentry, we go we're in a line and over 300 people got baptized that day. It started out with like 200. Yeah. By the and end then, of the day, they were like two. Because they were still accepting baptisms during the sermon. They're like, if you still want to sign up, you still have time right now. Click the link, sign they up. Said, oh, and they were accepting people who would just show up. Yeah. It yeah. was like insane. So. Dang, 300. Yeah. yeah it was amazing. Like, it was so beautiful. An amazing. Day. You go from so selling, selling jello shots for $3 to 400 people to being baptized. With, with 300, 300 people. people. Yeah. Praise God. Isn't Amen. that Praise radical? God. Praise that radical. God. That is so and It was hard. a beautiful day. It was so hot. Beautiful. And you were at the bonfire, mm. worldly bonfire, to Holy Spirit, Spirit fire. Bon- yeah. Oh, my God. That Look is at good. God. Look Talk at about God. that tomorrow. <laughs> where's, the, where's the, I'm going to say, where's the sounds? That was good. <laughs> Dude, that's so good. Hey, come on a fire emoji in the chat if you like yeah. that part. That, that's just God working through that. Oh, wow. That testimony wholeheartedly. Dude, that is so cool. Oh, Madison's uh, on. Oh, Did you see that? Madison, my girl. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, Daisy. Thank yeah, you. if you're watching you're and you awesome. don't subscribe to the show, uh, make sure you do that. You can smash yeah, it on whatever subscribe. platform you're listening to. And if you want to share this on Facebook or YouTube with your other friends, feel free yeah. to do that, too, to get this yes, this this uh, this convo out there to the world. Because I love your testimony because you're giving a lot of hope and a lot of, like, like the young people need people like you because you're open, oh, yeah. you're honest, you're joyful, and you're hungry for more. And mm-hmm. if we can just have more of people like you mm-hmm. in the younger generation, I truly think the whole country can turn around. Oh yeah, on oh, every yes. aspect of society, from art to entertainment to politics to everything, media, everything you can think of on all seven pillars of society. If we have more people that mm-hmm. are young and hungry for Jesus, yes, and yeah, like, and honestly. After getting more into the journey of this and like even just going to mercy, it's such like the Lord is coming for like I, the Gen Z. I'm already cl- I'm claiming that like that he's bringing a revelation on Gen Z because. Yeah. Well, and also let's uh-huh. back up a little. Mm. So um, our whole friend group that we hang out with now. Mm-hmm. Oh, Abby, literally. Gentry, Liberty. We all went to high school together. Yeah. And we were all and they not- all three got baptized together. 
Wow. Yeah. And, and we were not friends. <laughs> we were not friends. We but were, now, through the Lord. No, through the Lord, yeah. 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 He's made it like beautiful friendships. Like, yeah. it's crazy. We're so honest and so, like, open and you're yeah. there for each mm-hmm. other, and y'all are going to face struggles. And but yeah. it was just, it was so that. crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. six people. That's so powerful. From our high school, we're all best friends and we all love the Lord. Yes. Yeah, and God's just going to keep multiplying that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and, and our friend Liberty, she really had just like, she's like, God spoken to me. Like, she thinks that he, Jesus is coming to Blum. Like, mm. revival is coming. And it's just like, Jesus coming to Blum. Literally, like, we're like going to get signs. I was like, yes. I was like, <laughs> protest. I was like, bro, <laughs> it's really it's crazy. Like, I can totally see it. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful, but yeah. So got baptized, and that's literally when I was like, I'm give because I, I was still masturbating too. That's like something I was still doing. I didn't watch porn. I thought that was okay. No, that's not okay. Yeah, not I remember that. that conversation. So I was like, I was like, the um, we literally had a call friend. And I was like, can we do that? Because we knew uh, we knew okay. that sex before marriage was wrong, and we weren't watching porn anymore. So we we're like, okay, like, but what do we do? Like, what's the line? <laughs> yeah, like how close like, can we get to much, it? How much of your life do you have to give yeah, to Jesus? Like, so, like how much? So we like, called her, and she didn't say it like necessarily like don't masturbate, but she, she dropped like, it. She She's basically like, did. <laughs> you're you're still thinking of sinful thoughts when you masturbate. That's what she basically sounds like. <laughs> that was our answer. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, it's hard to masturbate if you don't some. Think of something that turns you on. I think so, we're gonna have to put like a advisory sticker yeah. on. This oh my god! <laughs> I am so sorry. I, I forgot. Just to point out too, Savannah's brought up both conversations. <laughs> She's been going to Dude, bring don't it call up. me out. Yo, like that. Y'all are gonna be oh the only gosh. ones promoting this episode. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My grandma will. My grandma. <laughs> no, this is needed though. Oh. This is needed though. And the Lord it's, is doing something with this. And th- we're getting no, into. Yeah, the, yes. We're getting into. Oh the, my gosh. This spot. And I'm not bringing it up, but at the same time, like we need to get into these nitty gritty conversations of vulnerable Christianity. I call it naked Christianity, pun intended, because you're getting everything out there. <laughs> And you're working through that and you're having conversations about it because how else are you supposed to have – if you never called your friend and you just kept doing what you were thinking was right based on the, the line that your own morality and your man, mm-hmm. man-made man thoughts yeah. you know, and your fleshly thoughts, you would have kept partaking in that thing that is sinful. Yeah, you right. Know? And then you have that right. separation from God because right. you're committing are, a sin. People are listening yeah. right now and they're like, oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> I didn't call my friend. <laughs> I, I don't have a friend that's gonna tell me something like that. Uh, yeah, exactly. So but, like, this, this God is gonna use this, and it's very, yes. very funny and very comical. Because, because I am we're, sorry, we're, y'all. We're, we're enjoying it. We're it's part of my testimony, though. Yeah, it is part of the testimony. <laughs> no. Yeah, you gotta bring it out, you know. But oh, we definitely gotta bring out a sticker that says. Uh, because Daisy, da- shout out Daisy uh, Chavez. Does she watch this on um, TV? She watches it with her. Um, well, her daughter apparently knows that she likes. She listens to our show because she came. Hmm. Her daughter came up to Catherine and goes, uh, "My mom listens to your husband's show," and, I, and she was like, uh. "Catherine thought that was really sweet." And I'm like, "Well, hopefully, like you know, we always try to be you know make sure it's kid yeah. friendly." But sorry, sorry, Daisy. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. But, hey, if you weren't ready to have these talks with your kids, sorry, now you have to. <laughs> you have to you're like, my who does that? <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to be like these two. <laughs> no, I meant that. That's if you want to be like me, that's teach why we tell our story. Now. Yeah, yeah exactly. because, no, literally. Because I think it would be a little bit different if my mom was like, hey, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> listen, listen up. up. <laughs> listen up, no. Uh, yeah. but crazy. She, hey, she's doing the best she could. Yeah. She got a lot of kids. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. and also, we have we were all fed. <laughs> we have such an opportunity to raise our children up in in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And we can break the chains. We can break the cycles. Mm-hmm. And we can do something like uh, I was talking to uh, Pastor Ray. Uh, you guys know Pastor Ray? I love, yeah, I Pastor, love Ray. Ray. Pastor Ray. Dude, he was so good. So cool. If you look at my notes, I have. The day of like what day we're on on Sunday, and I put just his name because he was so good I couldn't even she, take notes. She didn't think any notes. I said all I know is that Pastor Ray passed like he. That's what he did. <laughs> he's he spoke. sharp. He he's spoke. Sh- he's sharp. And I couldn't even take notes. It was too good. Yeah, he, he, he was talking about how like he includes like um, his children in his daily encounters with like um, praying over them and I've heard yeah. that a lot lately. You, you know, yes. and like um, a lot of people. Like, it was very powerful because I pray over my kids when I put, especially the littlest one, when I put him to sleep, mm-hmm. and I just started seeing like. Um, like he put it in perspective for me of like what that looks like when imagine if you had that imagine if you had like your dad asking you do you feel the presence of god mm. at 5 years old yeah yeah and you feel the presence of god and then the, then ray was like 
that and like basically telling him like you're experiencing God right now. Never, never forget what that feels like and always like lean into that, you know, yeah. from a young age. Imagine if you had that, you know, like how much better off and yeah. equipped would you be? You'd be a boy turning into a man of God like quickly, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, you'd accelerate, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I think that we have that opportunity as, you know, Gen Z and as the younger generation to give yes. that to our children in a way that is yes. going to like change the mm-hmm. outlook of of the nation, of the world. Amen. And Christ is, even if it doesn't happen in that way, Christ is not coming back for a, um, like a dirty bride. He's coming back for a spotless bride. Mm-hmm. So we might be oh. raising that generation that Christ yes. comes back for. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's what I was telling uh, Taylor and someone else. I was like, I keep, I keep thinking Gen Z's because if you really think about it, we come from really not ever really get to know the Lord. We don't go to church. A lot or of we people, come from a broken yeah. home, come mm-hmm. from a parents with addiction, parents with or kids without parents like you know yeah, we you just, lost a parent and that's in, a whole nother realm of like not yeah. being able to bring your questions to your mom about well, sex and about other things like that yeah and that's honestly i even really talk about that part kind of but at first i when it had all happened i did remember blaming god i didn't even know who he was but somehow i knew someone to, i could pick someone to blame and that first person i picked was god Wow. You can't blame anybody else. I know. And that's it's so crazy to think I never even knew anything about God and I'm over here blaming him. Like how come nobody ever blamed the devil? That's no. <laughs> they that's don't speak on what, it enough in church. <laughs> that's literally I was like bring He comes the devil. to kill, steal, and destroy and he never gets shade. Like what's and you going know, on? It's even, and it's also even more sad that I even thought that because my grandma had told me before she had passed her like she had literally said, I see him. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like it's powerful. I think I cried the first time you told me that. No, and I literally got tattooed on my arm. Like it's just something that I I've had this tattoo since I was it like, says what I see. Him? I see him, and those are her favorite. Like flowers. referring to Jesus. Yes, Ooh. and I still was mad. <laughs> like still, and still salty. At, at I was still salty knowing that she's seen him, and I'm just like, but I guess I was 11, so I really don't understand what what you see. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. what you see. You know, so you so, know. so crazy. Let's just stay right there for a second. It's like Jesus knows that feeling you know he knows that he has that compassion he experienced like when jesus the shortest verse in the bible is jesus wept yes and that's Mm -hmm. when lazarus was um dead Mm -hmm. you know and and he mourned with mary and martha and it just shows that like he felt everything that we felt for a reason so that like he can come down to the pit and pull you out and Mm -hmm. and show you like it's part of my plan i got you and like you're gonna see her again and like you know all these things that like that that confirms like you because you might not have known your mom's stance on God. But I, the second mm-hmm. she said see him, guess what? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you know where she's at, and that's peace. Yeah. That's it, true peace. And that's what I really have um gave to the Lord. Like I repented. I was like, I am so sorry that I even would speak words on you like that. Curse your name. Like and it's just crazy because I literally it's like confirmation that she was saved by his glory. And like I know where she's at. Yeah, and and he saved you. <laughs> yeah, and, so y'all can be together again. And he allowed her to say that to you. You know, in the yeah. in the vision that she had. Yeah, he gave her the opportunity to let you know that. Yeah, and oh, wow, he's good. And yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. Like we just radically got saved, and it's like holy cow. Like I just never. This is if you asked me this where I'd be today, I would laugh in your face. Like, did you have? similar joy to this before salvation i didn't know you before salvation so did you have joy like this um i think it was on a different spectrum it's a different sp- yeah. yeah i was yeah talk we to me were, about it. we were, were yeah. friends yeah. before oh, yeah. so i would say yeah like she's always savannah's the most down person i've ever <laughs> met in my life i'm like hey um i think we should go to this party there's gonna be like a lot of beer 500 people maybe some drugs she's like okay <laughs> We'll see oh, wait. We tear it up. Yeah, oh. she's like, I'll drive. <laughs> no, and I but was no, that but person. It's too. Even, I would drive. It's I would. even like, I was like, yeah. hey, I think that we're supposed to worship into Christmas. She's like, oh, yeah, I got the playlist. Like, okay. we worship for a whole hour so in, now it's into just, Christmas. It's just flipped. It's just flipped yeah, that no, same I'm passion just, and zeal uh-huh. for like and the world e- is now for the It's even more now, I feel like. Oh, she's even, happy now all the time. Wow. Yes. Before it was like, there was the sadness. But I was, it was a, it was a fake it till you make it. Yeah, and it I, truly yeah. was. Yeah. I could truly say that. Trying to fill a void, almost. I, yeah, and it was. I feel like if I didn't bring happiness and joy, make people laugh, then I wasn't doing something right. Like I had people had to like me, and that's yeah. why I always was like, I would never understand when someone didn't like mm-hmm. me, 
and I was like, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong or what I've done wrong to this person. I was just so, I was so just about being the likable person in any situation. Now I'm just like, I don't care if you don't like me because love, I love Jesus. Mm. And so if, if I talk <laughs> about Nobody Jesus, like Jesus. And, <laughs> no, really, it's crazy how much people don't like you, like for other re- little reasons, but they'll talk. But if you bring up Jesus, they're like, I do not like you. I'm like, because I'm what? Why? Like, <laughs> what? And that's really has a lot to do with my coworker. I, oh man. <laughs> I ain't gonna get into that, but uh, <laughs> that's probably good. But yeah, Taylor, it's, l- it's l- l- let's dive in a little bit of Taylor. Yes, oh let's yeah, do it. Let's, do it. let's do it. Let's dive in a little bit of Taylor. So I, um, I first kind of caught wind of you. Um, we were at the, uh, I think it was an encounter night. It was the one encounter night I was able to go to without the kiddos, and I was there, so I felt like more felt like a daily encounter. <laughs> 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 Your kids aren't there, you know. You're like, yes. oh wow, Lord, here you are. You know, no, it's I'm not, not two a.m. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so distracted by these crowds of toddlers, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, there's our- two toddlers as a crowd. <laughs> Dude, have you met them? Like they're the best, but also wow, they're Ooh, they're fun. They're so fun. I love them. They're, they're, they're the best. And um, man, I, I have like a new appreciation for my kids. I'm like falling deeper in love with them as they get older, and it's very very special. But um, I had a, an encounter that night, and um, it was really cool to see you were kind of the one that was um, kind of picked out of the people there and prophesied oh, oh, over. Oh, you were over the. Oh, yeah, yes. I was there that night. Oh my god. So gosh. that night was. <gasps> crazy because i had my connect meeting i had just became a member that day <laughs> that day bro that day <laughs> that day i became a member oh my god and i had my connect meeting and we were talking because i'm the oldest of seven and my brothers are big and loud like six foot and loud and like everybody <laughs> liked them i was kobe's sister lucas's sister and so i never really was like I out there yeah, yeah like so i didn't have to be anybody like, yeah you know yeah and so i told alex that i was like i just um i don't really like being the center of attention like i don't mm. and i said i think that's kind of what's stopping me for like sharing the word and like being really bold in it and he was like ask god ask god about that you know how mm, alex yes. is. he's just I like love that. just hear ask from god. the lord like oh yeah, yeah let just, me let, just let me just call lord. him yeah. <laughs> let me just hit him <laughs> up real fast <laughs> but, um and i was like you know instead of asking god about it i gave it to him and in, in church service, I was like, Lord, I don't claim this. Mm. I don't want it anymore. Mm. And then that night, Alex called me out in front of everybody and prophesied over me. Do you and remember what he said or some things of what he said? I, I play the video back a lot so that yeah. I can remember. Because um, sure, sure. you know me, I have pull up with the camera. Yeah, I record Savannah, everything. Savannah recorded most of it. And I'm I need really blessed. Yeah, I don't miss yeah. nothing. <laughs> I'm blessed to have We should that. go like Especially. evangelize in the streets. You down? Uh, Yeah. And we actually just talked about this with one of our friends. We want to get to reach, uh, outreach, yeah. outreach with mercy, mercy culture does. and they go out and be reach, just reach out to people okay. and do baptisms. I'm like, I want to do that. Yeah. I always want to, um, I'll have this idea to do like the power of 15 seconds and like what you can do in 15 seconds mm. for Jesus. So I kind of have a little idea if you want to oh, participate. That yeah. Send me, send me the details. Okay. I don't, I don't <laughs> have we details. Get, we get we're kind of like, we'll, we'll work on it together. Okay. Kind of okay. 15 <laughs> seconds. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Power 15 <laughs> seconds. And we also can do one like power 15 minutes, you know, Ooh, yeah, and like yeah. have two separate kind of vibes to it. You know, obviously yeah. shorts, longs, yeah, you know, yeah. all right. Anyway, continue. What, what was so, the things that were said? Um, Evangelism was spoke over me. Hey, that's yes. one of the fivefold ministry things. Yeah. Let's go. Evangelism, mm-hmm. um, youth were going to start flocking towards me, he said. Hey, birds, let's go. Yeah, well, let's maybe go. not flock exactly, but basically, he was like young adults, teenagers. Um, he also said that I'm an intercessor. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, he said something Sorry. about the grass. <laughs> the Love gr- that song. The um, gift of prophecy, too. So, really? Yeah. Jeez. It was like a cool. bu- Yeah, it was a I read it back. I like listen to it every time, and I'm like, <laughs> "You're like, excuse me, <laughs> I just got saved." <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's how I feel every time they tell me stuff. I'm like, uh, <laughs> are, you, "Are you sure?" <laughs> me? Me? <laughs> I struggled with that a lot when I first got saved. I was like, "Why me?" Like, okay, what about me? And like, I I believed it for everybody else. Like, mm. you know, I was like, yeah, yeah. "Yeah, I know that the Lord can save." anybody like anybody and i'm so stoked and i'm like i have that faith but i'm like he's like okay taylor you're gonna pray for someone and i'm like me <laughs> like me and so he sent me a scripture one day actually and i was reading in it and it's the part where he's resurrected and he's talking to mary magdalene and he's like go tell my disciples all of my disciples including peter that i'm i'm alive and that sent me like mm. 
Peter cursed his name three times. Je- yeah. Like Jesus predicted it. And then even after they like got back together, he literally called Peter to do the Lord's work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And like, so for that, like I, every time I start to have that thought, I'm like, no, including Peter, including Peter. Yeah. I, I have to tell myself that all the time. Well, that's powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, I, I'm Peter. <laughs> I'm Peter. I'm supposed to do the Lord's work. Yeah. And so, yeah. It, so, and it's just crazy. <laughs> so, so, so that was that night. So that's very powerful. So you get those words. And then from there, fast forward, I think maybe a few weeks. Next thing you know, I see you getting dunked underwater and your head's coming out and everybody's celebrating you because you yes. got baptized. So that was, that was also kind of weird. That was so that we was were, weird. They were announcing baptism days and... um. <laughs> Sorry. Our friend Abby looks at me and she goes, are you going to get baptized? And this like awkward energy came over me. And I was like, I don't know. Like you, like you, like you almost couldn't say no, but yeah. you couldn't say yes. Well, I yeah, I yeah. was like, I don't know. The Lord hasn't really called me to that. Like, that's kind of how I felt. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. kind of walked away after that. I was like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it was very, I feel like it was also very sudden because I know we had mentioned it at Mercy about like baptism. She was, I might like, if Dred was to do it, I think I would like. Well, because yeah, while like we were at, while like we were she's at, spoken into existence. Yeah, while we were at Mercy Culture, uh, the Lord actually sent me a vision of me being baptized. No, oh, yeah, Dred. yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> and so when I got brought up, I was weird. I was like, "Did you just see her act like that? Like, yeah, what just happened?" I, I'm gonna be honest. Like, it I was, acted really weird. It was really awkward. <laughs> and so um, <laughs> then I went home. I prayed about it, and I called my grandma, and I was like, "Hey, um, I don't know why I acted like that. Like, <laughs> could you speak some wisdom over that?" And she was like. Taylor, you're brand new. She said, I've known you for a very long time. And she's like, you've never looked or acted the way that you do now. Like when you're you, a new person. Yeah. And you had mentioned, uh, she had mentioned it because she's already been baptized. So she didn't like. Yeah. I had already been baptized. So I was like, yeah. do I have to, like, do I need to do it again? And that's what I told her. And she was like, yes. Yeah. She's like, you're new. Like, and also, you know, uh, the Lord breaks off some things in baptism too. Like, oh even no, if you've it was, been baptized, it was the most amazing. My, day. my friend got delivered. Um, like he was, he was like, bro, I already been baptized. And he got rebaptized and like, oh, I lost that. He, <laughs> yeah, he got chains broke off of him. You know, so yeah. go ahead. What do you say that day was powerful? Elaborate. It was. It was super. Like, I. It was almost like the feeling like I couldn't wait to get in. Like I couldn't wait because I knew wow. I, as soon as I got out that it would be completely different. Mm. Yes. And it was. I cried. Basically the whole day, I was Aww. like, could not stop crying. And my little sister, we went to the bathroom and she's like, cause my grandma's trying to explain baptism to them. Mm-hmm. They're six. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, so you got baptized. I was like, mm, yeah, you were there. <laughs> you, watched it. you watched it. And she was like, so that means all your sins are washed away. And like hearing a sin, like, that's such a dumbed down version, but yeah. Like, you <laughs> yeah, know, like, yeah. Yeah. like, yeah, like yeah. sometimes when you see things just plain mm-hmm. and clear that's when it probably hits you the most like yeah like yeah my sins are washed away like yeah once you like really feel the weight of those words and mm-hmm. not the cliche version of it right you know? like there's not elaborate like oh now you're gonna go out and do no. what the lord's called you or da, da, da. and i'm like no we're gonna start simple my sins are washed away yeah. we're gonna start <laughs> yeah. there mm. yeah but that's powerful i love that you said that because i think that there's still probably a lot of people listening to the show that have um, you know, have been seeking God, but aren't sure about the baptism because it's a big step of faith. You know, you're getting your socks wet for Jesus. Yeah, that was weird that too. Water. Had fuzzy socks. <laughs> Don't recommend. <Yeah. laughs> Don't recommend her. You know, there you go. You already got some practical advice there, but um, really pray about it. You know, if the Lord is calling you to baptism, if he's calling you to salvation, it's probably for a reason. And all these things yeah, yeah. are happening right now in the spiritual realm. And these conversations are being had because uh, the Lord is moving. So if uh, you're listening right now and like the Lord is like stirring something in you uh, and you go to a church or if you don't go to church, like seek out a place to get baptized. If that is something that uh, the mm-hmm. Lord is pressing on you today, because I'm telling you, I've experienced the conversations that I've had with people who are baptized and it is just a powerful transformation that they experience when they come out of that water. They're born yeah. again. It's a physical representation of what's going on inside spiritually. And it's the best thing that I feel like you can do to publicly declare that you are Team Jesus. Team yeah. Jesus. Well, it says two in the Bible, too. <laughs> if, yeah, that too. If that was <laughs> she loves, she loves, she scripture queen. Where does it say it? Where does it say it? Oh, I don't know. She John, John me. three. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, she I she mean, can like talk. Like, no, yeah. But I'm like, just saying, like, you know, if, if there's an. If you need any more confirmation, it says water baptism. 
<laughs> yeah. But you could be baptized in the spirit yeah, first yeah. too. Oh, yeah. And, and no, we, we see I that with Paul, that. you know, and I think that's where it happens first before it becomes physical. So that's, yeah. you know, be born in uh, spirit and truth and, and, and um, be born again in the spirit and water, you know? So, uh, and it's crazy because when you think of the, 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 the meaty weight of like, you know, when Nicodemus is asking to go back in the womb, it's almost like, you, you, cause listen, <laughs> every time I read that, I'm like, but, but listen, it's powerful because if you think of it, oh, you are being born again because you came into this world by water, water yeah. breaks, mm-hmm. yep. boom, you're being born again in new water yeah and he is the living water and you wow. get in it wow yeah right? wow you in yeah you get back in there yeah. <laughs> that's hey. good that's good and it better be warm you know a little warm, warm. But. my water was warm and very dirty <laughs> oh yeah you're outside, were outside. i was probably like the like 200 something person to go ours was, you, ex- ours, you extra baptized that day I was extra baptized. <laughs> ours was supposed to be outside yeah, it was, that cold. Day, it was it's yeah, cold. It was. Yeah, I think it was October 29th. I think. Yeah, yeah. I liked it where it was. It was kind no, of vibe. Yeah, that was a, very good. Yes, in bro, the worship. Like, yeah, it was a oh, that vibe. was a vibe. It bro. really was. Like, it, and dude, <laughs> I have a sick photo of her. I wish I could oh like gosh, put it up on yeah. the. But dude, it's like her. She's like so excited. She's got baptized and like a picture I take of like, her. I have my towel. Like, <laughs> and in the background, it's the song. It was. Uh, um, Hell's uh, lost thank another God. one. Yeah, thank, thank God. God. Dante this Bo. is Hell uh, lost another one. I look at the like, yeah. yeah. Didn't even plan that. I was yeah, like, was you perfect. can see it in the back. Like, perfect. Mm-hmm. I was like, bro, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, so if it would have not been blurry, that would have been like super. <laughs> <laughs> it gives it the vibe. I feel like it does. So yeah, sick. like we're in motion. <laughs> yeah, the energy that day was so good, and it was like a big moment for our church. I feel like because we were all so like already so um, like excited and enthusiastic yeah, yeah. about mm-hmm. worship we were always at the altar you know we're like we're like going hard for jesus like yeah in that <laughs> season i felt like was where like right Ooh. now like i love i love my church piece i feel like building culture has been kind of like great because it's making us sharp but like yes. i remember that season was very like yo we're count like jesus is like Jesus. is moving you know what yeah, I mean? like moving. you know like what's going on you know yeah. i just but, i just felt like that season was just so i felt like that was when everything kind of like elevated to where it's like we all became closer that day mm-hmm. as a church as a church oh, family yeah. you know and it was very like we were so happy and enthusiastic for each other and then we had that little boy that like spontaneously oh, got baptized i, I cried, cried i cried so like hard. a little baby <laughs> so i should have just sat down <laughs> I was like doubled over, like this is the best day of our lives. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're, we're, we're united. Yeah, and, you know. Don't even know his name, dude. I love that. Yeah, it was a very, very great day for our church, and I and I, I would love to see you know like more baptisms um, going oh, yeah. forward, and we're going to see it. You yeah, know, once we, are. we Once we launch, and see, we got to get this culture build up, and we'll have yeah, we'll have encounters ten times what we were having. I know. I I'm excited that. for it. You know, and it's it's really cool because it's almost like we're putting in the work right now mm-hmm. for that big moment of like what what the Lord's going to do for this year. And it's been really cool to be a part of and just understanding that yeah. we have like uh, a church that's growing and we were planted there for a reason. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Lord is moving in such a way that is like, it's on us. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. it on us. Like I have conversations with people at our church and I'm like, this is different. Yeah, this yeah. is people yeah. all yeah. united mm-hmm. in in the good things and the deeper things of God. You know, it's not about, you know, this, the, the people. It's really about the Lord and it's mm-hmm. being... And the overflow of that is being felt in many ways, you know, even yeah. from just the way things have been elevated there as far as like the new teams and the coaches and stuff like that. You yeah. see that these these moves are being made in a way that's like preparing the sails for the wind to blow. Yeah. Let me just tell you something about this. <laughs> this, is so, <laughs> this is so crazy. So first, I OK, I thought maybe this is a good question that we should get on. But like kind of how like we all found thread. I feel like that's kind of like. Yeah. You went to somewhere else, right? Like you didn't. Yeah, I went to I went to Calvary for five years. Yeah, see, like what? Like I know. It was see, such that's like another a... thing is I feel like everybody just has like radical stories of how they found thread. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like I haven't yeah. heard one that's been like boring. <laughs> like I, was, I said, yeah. I I went to uh I went to Thread because uh my friend Liberty and her family heard about Thread and she goes to, she goes to SLS there so it's kind of like just to her place but she wanted us to come support her family and kind of go and check yeah, it out. That's cool. So then we go, and it was literally my first night there. I was rocked either way. I was like, this is, and I loved it. I was like, I love it here. I love it here. And then it happened to be an encounter night. And I was like, that happened to me too. My first time. Yeah. Her first time was an encounter night night too. (laughs) So I was like, okay, okay, I'll go. I was about to go by myself, but then a liberty sister wanted to go too. And one of her friends, I was like, okay, cool. I feel a little bit like less nervous. Yeah. I was like, by myself, that's wild. Yeah, it is wild. Yeah. I remember seeing y'all when me, me and Catherine were walking out. Mm-hmm. 
uh, leaving one day on Sunday service. I yeah. once I saw y'all's group come in, I was like, oh, this is it now. This yeah. is y'all were the missing piece. I feel like that that thread needed to like yeah. Yeah, just yeah. go from a place of like. The, the people that used to come here and a few stragglers to like, oh, this is how we're going to build the church yes, now. Because I saw yes, y'all yes. praying in the parking lot. And I, look, <laughs> looked, I looked at Catherine. I was like, look at them. They're young and they're praying like in oh, the parking lot. We right. get that all the time. People come up to us and they're like, we're so glad to see you young people praying. Yeah, like, because at restaurants and everything. Yes. Like, oh, I my ne- gosh. I'm telling you, you don't crazy. You, and you don't see that. And yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of the things that. Are of the church that we got to see growing up is not the way things are going to be anymore. No. And we're going to be seeing a lot more intimacy with God in in groups and obviously in our one on ones. But it's to the point now where it's like it, it's we're going to make it not weird. You know what I mean? You know. Um, yeah. Uh, Alexis that just had the baby. She, I had a phone call with her helping Catherine out one time. She said something that was so powerful. She said, "I don't want to be the weird one that's out of my chair at the altar worshiping. I want to be the weird one for not being at the altar." Amen. Yeah. Alexis, let's go. Yeah, and I was like, sister, I, said, yes. I said, yeah, it's your sister. I said, that's a bar. I was like, I, I, I said, love I said, that she I said, said that. So hold up. That's I, think, a I think she got that from me. Let's <laughs> go. Let's go. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, and it really stuck with me because um, it was one of those moments where I was like, man, I want to live by that because it's so mm-hmm. true. You don't you don't want to ever think about man's or woman's perspective of of um of what you're doing to to give God glory. You don't want to care about that. You want to be at one mm-hmm. with Him and in the Spirit. You know, like yeah. all that other stuff is noise. All the the spectator, you know, eyeballs looking around the church is like. Why? Why we do that? Like, l- 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 like I know I want to see my people worshiping and stuff, and like loving the Lord too. But like, we don't need to be in a place of like ever thinking like, oh, hopefully somebody's not looking at me or looking at me, or I don't want to be the weird or one. Or they like, are seeing me. <gasps> They're seeing me do it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like sometimes you think that like your pride gets in, and you're like, yeah. I hope somebody sees me worshiping, worshiping mm, this. That's good. an interesting perspective. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like that's I can't. Good. I mean, Talk to me I, about that. I speak on that because Go I've ahead. felt that way before. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm worshiping so good. I'm sure somebody's gonna like be like, you picture. worship so great. Like, <laughs> oh my god, like, come up to me afterward and be like, I want to worship like you. How do you do it? <laughs> All right, so I just I, missed you know that. I just missed no, that this, very quickly. This, this is beautiful. This is I'm so glad you said this because um and Alex has talked about this before, but I had uh in the meeting I had with Ray today, uh, he talked about like putting your insecurities out in front of you and bringing it to the table so that way they have no power, no weight. And then when you do do that, you realize how stupid <laughs> and like sad and silly it is to feel that way because it's all pride. Yeah. And it's all. And it's, oh my gosh. But so it's so good that you shared that because I'm sure people out there also no, you know, yeah, want, uh, need sure. to hear that. You know, no. so how did you how did you overcome that? Are you still working through so that? So I, I realized like I was doing that and I was like, ew, like, ew. <laughs> ew. <laughs> Immediately I was like. Lord, like I worship because I love you. And like, I don't want anyone else to think that I'm needing their love or their validation Mm because I don't stand up there. I don't stand up there at the altar and sit on my like face down because I want everybody Mm -hmm. else to notice. Like I do it because the Lord asked me to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, And that because I love him. So I don't want anybody else to be like, she does that for attention. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. And when, and I mean, people do say that. So it's like, I know that that it's not true in my heart now. Yeah. Before, if somebody would have told me that, I'd been like, oh, yeah, I do it because y'all, like, cause y'all are watching. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, that's I so set the though. tone. Yeah, yeah no. Oh, yeah, right. And, that's what. Yeah. But yeah. I always did talk about, like, leaders have to, like, no, if you want to. and that's um, true. And lead in the front and, you know, even, and worship even when you don't feel like it, you know. Yeah, yes. But it makes mm-hmm. you feel better to worship, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, if you don't feel like it and you force yourself to worship, you start to feel better. Yeah, you know, I so love just, worship. Yeah, you clock. Yeah. Mine. I know. Next, uh, same. I fall a little short there. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, you get, you gotta know the songs better. You know the songs well. No, I know the songs. You know the songs. Yeah. <laughs> what the problem is? You be thinking or what? Um, you be in your head. Uh, sometimes, yeah. Um, mm. so I started praying during worship instead, of, like. Okay. Not instead of sitting there and thinking and getting distracted, I have mm. really bad ADHD. So like, mm. standing there with my eyes closed. And I, rebu- <laughs> I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Yeah, in Jesus' Amen. name. You Amen. don't got ADHD. I don't claim that. You don't Amen. claim that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I just get distracted. So I started praying out loud. Nobody can hear me anyway. So yeah. the Lord can hear you. Well, the Lord, yeah. But <laughs> Savannah, oh, can't even, <laughs> Savannah can't even hear me, and she stands right next to me. I'm sure. She- I'm so I just started praying. Then I hear her in there. I'm like, yeah. Um, oh yeah, because I encounter with headphones on, so that I can't like hear myself. 
But yeah, it is interesting that you say, like, how do we all come to Thread? Because, yeah, I went to a church for five years and was, like, yeah. really close with a lot of the pastors there. Uh-huh. Like, I actually just saw one of them this morning. I was working with him, my buddy Turner. And um, Dustin's, like, one of my, uh, like, spiritual mentors and stuff. And next thing you know, I just, you know, um, Catherine saw that video that Alex and uh, Brenna made that Leah actually shared. So Catherine knew Leah, saw the video, uh, sent it to me. And I was watching the video with my friend Olivier, who was here in town. Yeah, yeah. And we were planning on going to Tony Evans Church. And I don't know if you know who Tony Evans is. He is a beast. I've heard at y'all preaching. About like him, he is so know. good. You yeah, got you yeah. got just catch a, a sermon. This is actually his his study Bible right here. Anyway, we're gonna go mm. see him. We both love Tony. He's like one of our you know mentors as well. Like you don't know it yet, but yeah, uh, <laughs> you don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, send this to Tony Evans. Yeah, right. Send this to Tony Evans. You know him. Connect us. Uh, <laughs> but y'all yeah, would love to have Tony on, man. I'd I'd geek out. But anyway, uh, we were supposed to go see him, but then we saw that video, and I was like, yo, like Olivia, what do you think of this? He's like, yo, we should go. Like it's the yeah. first Sunday ever there. Like so, we showed up to the first Sunday ever. Me, yeah, Olivia. What did that look like compared like, to Sunday's now? Uh, it looked like Brenna coming over and saying hi and welcome to, you know, Thread. And she yeah, gave yeah. a really good warm impression and like was very genuine She's and, great. and showed a lot mm-hmm. of love, like from the jump to the point where it was like, um, we felt like, wow, this is like something special here. And we can tell, um, uh, by the worship, Kaylee, just voice of an angel. We're Bro, like, Whoa, huh? I love up. to listen to Kaylee worship. I love uh, it. Man. And she just cries and prays. And I'm like. It's all, it's so authentic. When That's she, what I w- like. When she worshipped on here, I I, I uh, clipped it up and I uploaded it on Spotify. Mm-hmm. And now I walk Zeke to sleep with it, and he he's out when when I, I put that. put that on. So like I be, wow. we be listening to her a lot, you know. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, so good. We I tried to get her back tonight, but she had rehearsal or was out of town or something. Yeah, but, she's out of town. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. You know, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll get we'll get her back on soon, and uh, she has a great story as well. And then from there, like, we were just super pumped up about everything that was happening there. We felt very, like, the Spirit wanted us here. And yes. um, it was also closer to home. It was about, yes. you know, like, 10 minutes closer. And that makes a difference. We were doing more life in Cleburne than mm-hmm. Burleson. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were like, yo, this is, like, you know, something that we can grow in together. You yeah. know, and, like, we saw that there was younger families there and, like, kids. You know, we saw yeah. it, the Birkins, There's Ryan Birkins kids. kids there. Bunch and stuff. of kids. <laughs> bunch of kids, man. <laughs> yeah. Be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> I, I took that was, seriously. That's what I, I, um, seriously. My radical moment was with these kids because kids scare me. Like, <laughs> I, and look and look at me. I over rebuked here. that, yeah. I'm really like, not anymore. She already shit. rebuked it. <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah. Right, yeah. This, is, this is gone. This is, this, is, yeah. this is the throne room. It's gone. But like, I so when I had that, went to that encounter night, I was, uh, was doing an anointing service, and um, he was basically saying, I'm like, um, God sees me as his joy child and that I'm going to bring joy to people. And mm. I'm like, I just have this fire. I'm hungry, like, and all this stuff. And well, when I did find my membership connect thing to like, you know, serve, I put like media or first impressions. I was like, that's where I feel like I'm going to be, you know? And well, at one point in my encounter, the Lord kind of told me like, cause I said, what am I not doing good enough? Like, or like, what should I be doing better? Basically. Dangerous and he was question. like, huh? Dangerous question. Dangerous, dangerous question. That, literally <laughs> dangerous. Like, and he said, "Don't forbid in my fruit in the womb." He literally said, "Let's say that." I said, "Is that me?" <laughs> she brought that to me, and she said, "You think I thought that?" I said, "Savannah, I've never heard you say yeah. any of those." I words. have never said any of those words, and I was like, "Huh, weird." But I know like what that really meant. I didn't like that wasn't anything I asked about like church or anything. I just asked, you know, why am I not doing good enough? Well, I had my member connect meeting, and they like. It says here you want to do a uh, media or first impressions. Ah, uh, that's not the Lord told us. That's not the Lord. Brenda's like, yeah. Um, I was really feeling led that you should be in the nursery. Ah, uh, me? She said I've never held a baby before. I don't. Hold, I don't hold babies. <laughs> if I hold them like this. Yo, Brenna, Brenna, and, and Alex be praying over their like. No, their they, church they pray over us. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They do. They separate. They separate and they pray. They don't tell each other what they say mm-hmm. until that meeting. That's so interesting. And he brought me, uh, the verse he had brought me was Psalms 23. And I was like, and of course, at this point, I didn't know nothing about the Bible. I was like, what? You didn't even know Psalms 23? No. Dang, that's like, everybody knows that But I was like, the Lord's my shepherd. But I'm still like, I was like, uh, (laughs) I was like. She still don't know it? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. She got a whole classroom. (laughs) (laughs) Taylor killed it tonight, dude. Oh, man. Don't embarrass me like that. Sorry, sorry. Anyways. (laughs) But yeah, so that was just really crazy. I was like. Um, and I kind of told her like this thing and it really just comes from losing a parent. It's just kind of something mm. I grew. Like, I don't want that to happen to my kid or me lose, lose a kid. Like the that's just of fear. the sp- 
spirit of fear. Wow. Amen. Like literally, I was filled. Sure. I was filled with just fear of <laughs> that, really. And um, yeah, so she called me into the nursery, basically said that's what the Lord wanted me to be. And, and you yeah. like submitted to that. And, and I submitted to that. I was, oh, yeah. I was like, 10-4. I'm yeah. ready. How's it going? You've been, you've been in the classroom for a few weeks now as far as um, getting your, your, yeah. your feet wet. How's that been? It's been good. Um, I finally I got burped on one day by a baby. So that's she finally got spit up on. I got spit up on. <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna experience that, but I did. I held it pretty good. Not gonna lie, it's yeah, pretty it's good. Not it's not bad, good. right? You, it's you, not you bad. fear it way more than it. It smells horrible. It smells so bad. But depends um, on who's kid it is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what are they eating? <laughs> what were they eating? <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Um, it's been awesome. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting to the point to also know how I speak to them. Like. I old self, I was just been like, Why you do what do you do not understand? Like what I'm trying to tell you this. Like what do you but understand? Of course they're toddlers and I'm just like <laughs> Whoa, this is crazy for me. And like even with I have a niece and nephew, but I was never around for like that part that of their life. life yeah, of zero to two. They were already knowing how to talk back and say some curse words. It's like I saying some curse words. Come on, you know. They so, learned a lot from you. <laughs> no. Oh. <Just> <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All that FaceTime. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I think that's been used the most of, in, other than any other podcast. It's always when Savannah talks. <laughs> yeah, what, what you doing over there? Oh my gosh, that is so funny. But yeah, so um, yeah, I that's you're doing just, it. Good. I'm just doing it. Yeah, just doing it. I'm just like lost now. I'm just like. <laughs> and how do you feel about the so six? Funny. Six. Uh, you're doing what? What ages? Um, are going I'm, to be? I'm in three to five, but I'm doing six to twelve. Like, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> how do you feel about that? The Lord asked me to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's not the age group that I would have picked. Yeah, of course not. I mean, no, well, I, I really not love, I I love like that age. three to five, like for sure. And I'm kind of like one extreme or the, the other. Like I want the three to five or I need them to be like 13. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't need. Well, you had six brothers younger than you. So I feel like you have I a have, lot of experience. Yeah, I have four brothers and two sisters. Yeah. Okay. Six siblings. My bad. Yeah. Um, but I do. I do have a lot of experience and that's the worst age. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> they can talk back and just like and, they have the and attitude. also too, I I did a cognitive development class yeah in college because I was going for intermediate studies, which is like lower level elementary. Sorry, I'm not close enough. <laughs> I'm bad at this. Um, <laughs> but um, also in that age, everything is really dramatic. Mm. Like, and they they really think that it's like that. Like that's how it is in their brain. Like that's how they're wired right now. That they, the world is out to get them, basically. Yeah. Like, and they don't understand that that's any different. So how do you mm -hmm. sit down and like explain that? Jesus. I know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's where yeah. you're, that's where you come say, in. But <laughs> no, it's easy to say, but on, on, honestly, a lot of it is just uh, relationship. Yeah. It's relationship building, and then them learning from you and seeing like what your experiences were and how you you can walk them through that. In a way that is like showing them from right for wrong. And it's not just what you're saying, it's what you're doing. So like mm -hmm. they'll be able to see the transformation on you and you can like reflect on the where God's brought you to be able to minister to them in a way that's going to help them in that situation, especially when it comes to mindset and self-image yeah. and identity. I feel like you have a big role to play in that because I feel like you're stepping into what that looks like for you now. So you'll be able to speak on it from a really fresh perspective. Yeah. And that's, I mean, in the Lord sent me the first Peter 5.2. He said, basically, do what I ask you eagerly. And I was like, then I'm right, excited. Yeah, exactly. I'm excited then. And, yeah. and, he'll, and I, he'll close I mean, the doors if it's not meant. Like, right. you know, mm -hmm. it could just be a season. You never know. And it, you're walking with God in a way that's cool because you're letting him open the doors for you on where he wants you to be. Right. You're basically saying, send me, you know. And that's, you what, me? I mean, that's what I want. And I mean, Alex spoke that over me, too, that I'm going to go where other people won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'll claim that. <laughs> where you want to go? Like, where, where, is your, where do you think the Lord's going to bring you outside of uh, just the church? I'm not sure yet. So mm -hmm. evangelism is a broad, like, perspective. You could do it in your city, in your country, in a different state. But I'm, I'm excited for this year because I did ask the Lord if I was supposed to go to ministry school because I felt like he said that I should do that. And he told me to wait. Wow. He said, not now, wait. Okay. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> so what's going to happen then? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, so I kind of don't want to like get my mind too wrapped on one thing mm. yet because I kind of want him to speak. Yeah, that's good. 
just because if I think it, then I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, that's from the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When that's not necessarily mm. the case. <laughs> How does he speak to you? Uh, mostly through vision. Really? Man, I'm jealous of that. <laughs> it And I don't get them, like, all of the time. But, like, um, he'll like send when you're me sleeping or, like, day, like No, like, a, yeah. Awake. Mm-hmm. awake vision. Awake, not sleeping? I've only had one. Okay, one dream. A sleep one. one and that was one? Okay. that I was going to be on the pod. What you mean? Like I had oh, a dream that I was going to be on Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Like, she literally told me about it. She's like, yeah, like... It was a weird dream. It wasn't yeah, like it, was it wasn't like so cut and dry that you're drop like, a was, thumbs up if that blessed you today. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was a weird dream, and like I was waiting at your house for you to be ready for the pod. Catherine came in, and she was like, "Hey, are you gonna like you? Can you redesign our bedroom?" Like I was like, "Why am I in your bedroom?" She would never say that. <laughs> I know. I, I it didn't seem no. like her either. That's why I was really confused. Like, but, and she's like, "Yeah, I just want your like interior." design and i'm like i'm not an interior design person. but she does that like she's so into like in, like designing rooms like she designed my room when we move out into our new place mm-hmm. like just something that she's kind of yeah so i think that's i guess i was just designing all the rooms of the house so that kind of just came in well is that a word for me i'm gonna write that down i am like pray into that <laughs> but um <laughs> so, redesign our room <laughs> but then i was going in and we did the pod well we came back to your house and th- there were like a million kids there too at your house. <laughs> I don't know what that says, but I'll tell you what it says. <laughs> oh Lord! But uh, there were a bunch of kids there, and like it was kind of like your whole family. So I'm thinking in my head, like, why are we having a podcast right now? Your entire family. Yeah, your it's house. gonna be so loud. <laughs> yeah. so we go, we do the pod. Don't really remember anything from it, but um, really, yeah, oh, we come cool. back, and one of your like niece or something like needed healing. So yeah, write that down too. That seems significant. I don't know what. Do you and, know? Do you know any? Um, all right, just needs healing. That's all you got. Uh, kind of yeah. And then so <laughs> I prayed over. Her. She seemed all right <laughs> at the end of the dream. All right, cool. I'll, I'll let her know. <laughs> do you only have one niece? I do. That they, they came to mind. Yeah, I actually think I only do have one niece. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Well, no, I don't have only one niece. I have one niece that came to mind. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so that um. That happened, and I woke up, and I told Savannah, I was like, hey, I had a dream I was on the pod. <laughs> and then, like, two that was three the, weeks that's later. That's the only, like, like sleeping vision that I've had yeah, ever. Yeah. I pray for them all the time. Wow. I pray for them almost every night. I've been getting the craziest ones. You get yeah, them? Yeah, Savannah does. You get them? She's never had visions awake, but she has all dreams. She's asleep. Tell me but, the one that comes to mind right now. Where she um, I'm wearing a pink suit, and I'm preaching in a prison. <laughs> it's on her vision board. It's a little on my vision board. Pink suit. Why the pink suit? Because like, I think it's like just, I think it's just women empower me. It's like yeah, and it's like I think it's showing that I'm like leading instead of like mm. you know. It's like I think it was so significant that it was showing me like that's what I like what I'm doing. I'm preaching to these people that need like the most. standing out too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that one was my crazy one. That I had. You know, I just went this past like a couple hours ago. Trust me, you, you I trying know. to come? Like, yeah, I can I, get you in there. I have that link, but I still need to figure out how to get into that. Because uh, you don't need to figure out. You just need to do it. Oh yeah, I need to do it. <laughs> you don't need to figure anything out. You there's, need a to lot, do it. there's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, Dang, that's powerful. No, it was it's crazy. And and you're a CEO, so right? Yes. Are you uh, removing yourself from that job? Yes. Okay, so that's interesting to like. Lord told me that's my last last time he's telling me to quit. Yeah, and so it's kind of like quit and then be sent sent in for a different reason. Yeah, and wow. like um, I plan to start SLS and um. What is that? That's well, the spiritual leadership school at Mercy Culture. It's kind of what Alex gets like part in. He's like that's where he goes and stuff. Okay, what does that entail? Like as far as um, is that is that like a a school or is that like a um? So it's like a school, but you don't really like. I don't think it's like any type of degree. I think it's just like you a, get like, like a, a certificate of completion, completion kind of thing. But it just kind of helps you grow into knowing the Lord. And you learn and like, like the doctrine and the theology yes, and yes. like basically the stud, like the study of the Bible. And so it, it could be like two years for sure, but they can invite you back the third year. But they like it's like an internship. So they pay you to go basically come like it's like a thousand a month or something like that. And <laughs> sign me up, man. But uh, I, I are you gonna get it. accepted for the third year? Yeah, so I like, pay to go to mine. So I think it's just really based on like just how much you're involved and like they see your fire basically, and they well they pray you back. over every kid in each yeah, class, and they mm. pray over. And then uh, the fourth year is a hard year. It's like one or like one to three people could probably get accepted into the fourth year because that's to build them a church. 
Like, yeah, that's basically they, you've got picked yo, to be a pastor. Mercy culture doing some like insanely big kingdom things. Like I yeah, saw, I know. I don't know if so y'all sick. like saw this past Sunday. Like I got home from church. I look on Instagram. They posted like seven things that they're doing that are all fascinating. They're like going to Israel. I know. Doing a I social media, sure. media, like world, media yeah. content so team. Bad. We should go. We should Bro, go out. I'm about to quit my job. I don't know if I'm going to have $3,000. <laughs> That's how much it costs? You looked? It's the 30, it's, it's 3500 like yeah. but it's like four if you want spending money and stuff. All right. So Alex Birkins is going to uh, sponsor us? <laughs> Alex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, Alex. That's going to be like, y'all can't come back. <laughs> what? Oh, my gosh. Well, it's a, like, especially hey, it's in April, cause... we're having our heart for three. <laughs> Hey. hey, that could be part of the um, what do you call it? a miracle offering? Like send send yeah. some people to, to Israel from Thread. Like oh my let's gosh. go represent. Dude, that'd be that'd, that'd be, be so sick. sick. That'd I know I'm just sick. throwing that out there, but <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm part of the family, right? You can bring something to the table. You know? pray yeah. about it. I don't the, know. But pray the Lord there. really told me. He really spoke obedience over me this year, and I was supposed to quit like in December, but I didn't. And this time, He literally gave me like a day. Slow and, obedience is better than no obedience, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's now it's like um, positive spin on disobedience. He literally <laughs> <laughs> makes it sound a little bit better. <laughs> Jesus and jokes, you know. Yeah, no, you're good. You're funny, man. You're funny. And uh, <laughs> but kind of like any like today was just really crazy because um he spoke to me like I need to basically give put my life down at the altar and ask for spiritual covering. So I did, and so I'm just kind of new in this new season of. Uh, Who'd you ask for spiritual covering from? I asked Alex and Brenna. Wow. How'd that go? It went amazing. Yeah. And uh, he said, let's do this. And he's like, you finna, I'm finna test you. Like, he's finna, like, make. I'm finna test you. He's fixed to break me. He wants to, like, he's going to see how much I can handle and, like, see where I'm at on the level of obedience. And and he was like, I saw him about to fast for three days and see what the Lord kind of, because he asked if I had, like, if the Lord told me if I'm supposed to work after I quit or what it looks like, if I'm even supposed to get a job, like. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't ask that. <laughs> I think. Like, I, I was like, I'm going to probably do some babysitting, you know, kind of steer, like, you know, in that way. He's like, well, I think you should fast for three days and then see what he says. He's like, maybe he won't ask you to work. <laughs> Which I had told him I would even lose everything. I'll lose my car if I did. It's not gonna, I'm, we already I've, figured that out. So We figured that out. And I've done it before. <laughs> I lost a car before. I'm just like, I'm still here, you know, and these worldly things aren't worth uh, missing an opportunity from mm. a blessing that the Lord was going to provide for me. Wow. And so, yeah, it was a really big, uh, big deal today. That was a big stepping stone for me. I didn't think he was going to say yes. Was that on, and, on kind of the, did you listen to our episode and kind of feel led? Um, it was so, I already had an encounter before and I had asked the Lord what that looks like. He just told me to lay down at the altar. And I didn't really know what that meant I, in that video. We really did some work. I was like, okay. Now I kind of know what that means. Like, well, praise God for that, because like that, yeah. that that was like our episode for those listening was with Alex Birkins a uh, yes. couple weeks ago. We talked about spiritual, spiritual covering. covering, and it was yes. like forty five minutes of like it got pretty like I don't want to say like tension, but it got kind of like really deep into no, like yeah, whoa, this is like heavy stuff. Like it's heavy, and yeah. yeah, and I don't, you know, I was I was expecting him to say like I don't think you're ready for this. Like I don't know. <laughs> Like honestly, all you teach that a was, classroom at my church, but no. He's like, yeah, you know, but no, it's just really awesome. He he was really given that first. I was like, I don't know how he was taking it because I he's a busy guy, busy guy, mm, and busy. I didn't. I was at the point I was like, I don't want to feel like I'm doing what everybody else is doing because he had just talked about the degrees and stuff, mm, you know. Yeah. And so I was just like, do I still do it? I don't want to feel like I'm just doing it because, you know, I heard someone else was doing it. But no, he's like, no, I think no, let's do this. Like that's gonna be good. Yeah. And I told him about the SLS thing, and he's like, I'm um, trying to get to preview week in April. And so I'm just kind of blessing. Like, it's a bless. Like, yeah. Like, it's, it's the, overflow, like, the overflow. It's the overflow. Yeah. And so I don't know what it's going to look like when I quit my job. So it's going to be. It's all faith filled. You know? No, it's all. Yeah. I was like, the Lord ain't going to tell me again. And I don't know what he has for me. It's a, you don't want to miss your blessing. I don't. Yeah. I say what I told us. I don't want to miss my blessing. When I quit my job yeah. to go, uh, like in obedience, he called us to go an RV journey. Oh yeah. With no income, <laughs> wow. straight up like sell yeah. your things, go an RV. Wow. Go see what it looks like to evangelize. Like go spread the gospel. Go grow the grow the ministry. And I was like, all right, Lord, like let's do it. It was a it was best four months of my life, and I got to see what spreading the gospel looked like. Um, outside of a podcast, you know, in yeah, yeah. campgrounds and just 
um, just at, um, at mountains and hikes and with my family and just uh, experiencing uh, nature in a way I've never experienced before with hikes and uh, with rivers and waterfalls and dive rocks and fishing. I love like that for you. It was, it was <laughs> so, so it was so cool. powerful and it was like one of those things where it let me see exactly what our family needed and what we wanted because we didn't really know what we wanted in, at that season of life. Of yeah. Like, what does our future look like? And then boom, we come back. The Lord um, opened up a big door for us to um, have a house on some land that's family owned. Uh, so we now live on 43 acres. <laughs> Bless up. Can we get someone to in Alvarado? <laughs> Dude, bless up. And that's all the hand of the Lord. I'm telling you, like the whole story from how we went from the RV to a house on the land with our with our family is a is a true testimony. And that all came from that decision of quitting our job and yeah. just relying on Him for finances. You know, dude, it's been to be wild. And, yeah, and just also, be ready. yeah, and it's even it was also more like confirmation when we had just it was like last Sunday or Sunday before. Um, Alex was kind of praying and he had prayed over me and said, um, you think that what the Lord's doing right now is crazy? What he see, what he does next? Yes. That's really what the Lord told me. I was like, what is he going to do next? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. Like, and, wait, there's more. <laughs> there's more? How can there be more? And like, even had Taylor had mentioned 2024, the Lord showed up the first month. Literally, we're getting invited onto the pod. We're getting spoken over. We're getting all this stuff. We're like getting classrooms. We're getting getting classrooms. Yeah. Like, and oh my god. Just want to say I invited y'all before y'all got classrooms. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> no, I knew y'all about to get she real said busy. That first, she said the first. <laughs> <laughs> she did. I, I just want to put it out there for the people listening. <laughs> oh, did I be saying everything first on this podcast? <laughs> I know, right? That's great. Now this has been an awesome episode, y'all. I truly appreciate y'all coming on yeah. and you know sharing the joy of what yeah. the Lord's doing in your life and where He's brought you. Like what are all awesome mm. testimony for the people that are listening that are maybe in bondage now with many of the things that we talked about or yes. living for the world but you know need something to just bring them over that edge closer to christ and you guys gave a new perspective that i think a lot of people are going to value tonight value yeah. when they listen to it so yeah wow yeah it's powerful be, uh if y'all listen to his pod his first episode is the devil don't want to smoke <laughs> Don't be the number three person. That's what Don't I was for. I was the number third person for a long time. What you mean? It's when you hear the word, but you can't give up the worldly things. Ah, uh, the parable of the, the seed. The parable. Yeah. Yes, and I was like, that's me. Wow. And I grew from that. And I just that's like, I heard that video I said, notes all day. I was, and that's my first episode I listened. She's to. She's like, hey, yeah, that's did, you, did you uh, listen to that? I was like, yeah, I'm on like 64. <laughs> yeah, no, she literally be watching them. I'm like. Huh. <laughs> That's so special, and thank you for that. That means yeah, a lot because sure. it, show, yeah. it shows me how much God can use you. Like three years later, that oh. was like three years well, no, ago. Yeah. It, it just really helped because I I just stepped out of the world, and for me, it's like okay, what does my family dynamic look like? What does my mm-hmm. friend dynamic look like? What am mm-hmm. I fixing to lose? What like you yeah. know like like I was I was deep I was deep in it. I lived in Galveston. I feel you. You ever been there? <laughs> no, that's why I was. You heard it on the pod. I yeah, was deep uh-huh. in it too. You know, it's like once that happens, like, it's crazy. Yeah, just. And so it just really helped because you were like very open about your struggles too. And I think that's why it's really important. Like it's not, it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not pretty. You don't, you, once you get in that, you get dunked in that water, things aren't, you know, you, you <laughs> you're not holy. squeaky clean. No, you're yeah, squeaky yeah. clean. You know, it's dirty. It's, it's your water. Dirty water. <laughs> it's it's that, dirty water, but that's the cleanest water I ever stepped foot in. Still the cleanest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, <laughs> but yeah, that episode is actually yeah, it's episode two. That was the first oh, one you listened to. Yes, you're right. Sorry, the, yeah. the devil don't want no smoke with Jesus. That's my in, that was my Instagram bio. That, I that was to so that. cool. I was so inspired by that. So. <laughs> Bro, Thank I you. was like, dude, that don't want no smoke. I used to say that all the time. I want no smoke. But he, but the, but the devil, devil don't want the no, devil smoke don't want no smoke with Jesus. But Jesus, I'm like, you know what's Bro. crazy? In Genesis three fifteen, it talks about um, the seed that that's going to restore humanity is going to come from a woman, and it's in the. And the heel is going to smash the serpent's head. And the only thing that's going to happen to the heel is it's going to be bruised. And that's Jesus basically stomping on the head of the serpent. Wow. And the only thing that happens to him is a, is a little bruise on his heel. You know? Like, <laughs> wow. Whatever. You know, like the devil don't want no smoke with Jesus. And then the whole Old Testament, you see the devil trying to kill the offspring mm-hmm. of the seed. So he was thinking mm-hmm. it was Cain, uh, yeah, one, yeah. Cain and Abel. So then, boom, that happened. Next thing you know, he's trying to kill all the babies all the way up until Jesus is here. <sighs> All the way up until King Herod, he's trying to kill all the babies. He yeah. was so dumb. He's not all knowing. The devil's not all knowing. So he was trying right. to kill all the, all the babies, and he he's still not figuring it out. So yeah. the devil don't want no smoke. He doesn't. Well, I mean, it's, it's even you just speak his name. 
Speak his name. Speak his name and the devil. And he like, flees, you know? Yeah. Like it's so it's so the devil, man. <laughs> you got nothing on Jesus, man. So <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is a blessing, y'all. So thank you so much for being here today. Yes, thank you to everybody course. that's been watching. Yes, y'all. Uh, are you still doing your podcast you will provide? Okay, so I, um, that's also a thing. I fasted it when I did food. I felt like the Lord said that I wasn't doing it the way he asked. Mm. So I deleted my social medias for it because I did not pray about that before I stepped into it. And I do have a couple videos lined up. Okay, nice. So um, On YouTube? Uh, not, they're not uploaded yet, but yeah, I have some written out that I kind of want to get into and, um, for sure go watch the other ones for now. And when I get, (laughs) when I get some time to, (laughs) got you. Okay. But But yes, I'm still planning on doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And we heard everything you got going on in the future. So that's exciting. So make sure you guys follow them and keep up with their journey. Uh, that's going to be exciting. I'm excited to see all that God does. And it's so cool that we're at the same church to be able to witness it. You know, yeah. sometimes I have guests on that I don't see for months and months and months, but y'all get to see next week. So, or this Sunday. So yeah. it's exciting to see and grow with you guys at our church. And uh, for all our Thread family that's watching, we appreciate y'all being here tonight. Yes, thank uh, you. Y'all have been awesome. Everybody in the comments, wow. we truly appreciate it. And if you guys are listening to this at a later time, we also really appreciate you guys uh, being here. We are, we are encouraging the lives because we want to create that engagement and just that real time. <laughs> Um, interactions with you guys to be able to engage with the show and just have fun with us and and learn and spiritually grow uh, throughout this. And uh, I do want to just give you some cool news. Uh, We kind of referenced the prison ministry. I actually just this past Tuesday had a special recording um, with my man, Charlie Owens. Oh, Uh, there he is. Look at him. Yeah. That that pod went so hard. Went so hard. It did. You you want to hear a nugget? (laughs) Let's hear the nugget. Let's hear the nugget. That was fire. He was dropping nuggets left and right. No, and his story, his, his story is wild. Literally fire. Wild. Literally fire. And he walked through fire. Let's go. Yeah. Like, that's you know, crazy. And and I'm so glad that y'all experienced listening to that one because it was so it was so a God the way it all moved and the way it all happened mm-hmm. and the way oh, we just connected. Yeah. And the Lord literally it was like, you said you were going to invite Charlie and you didn't invite him invite him now and then boom I invited him at like the perfect time he yes. came on and uh he was the one that kind of took our show to like a whole new level on the yeah, internet yeah that's yes. what Savannah was like hey have you watched this one I was like no not yet yeah I it's, said it's got like half a mil on TikTok <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's already it's, it's gotten like two million now in like a month oh my gosh, that's and crazy. I've actually um the other day I got a message uh, from somebody that saw the video that was a long lost friend of Charlie. Oh, my heart. Oh, and he awesome. reached out to me to send Charlie his number and they reconnected. Mm, and tell gosh. me how that guy lives close by now in Granbury and he wants to go with Charlie to the prisons, to the prison ministries as well. If that ain't Jesus. All from the power of that video going. Dude, I'd be telling my friends and like, and even some family, like, if you don't hear these stories, especially from people that you know, and it's crazy because people won't, they don't believe you <laughs> until it happens to them. Mm-hmm. But like, how do you hear this and you don't believe? Blows my mind. Yep. And the crazy part is when we, so we, uh, this Tuesday, we had another uh, episode, part two. Yes. And we went even deeper. Oh. So we're actually going to be releasing that um, shortly in a few weeks. We're gonna. Oh, is that the one um, you just posted? Like, yeah, a little cool like background. Yeah, we, drop we, ahead. we were at a camp. We, Dude, we made a, cool. a campground fire, you know, <laughs> and then we had like camping stuff out. And we really created a scene and ambiance and a vibe for it that I really think is gonna connect at a different level with our viewers and our supporters and our listeners because it's going to be something that is going to be valuable to um to just experience that element of it with us and we're going to do one of those a month we're going to call it like a we're going to do a banger a month pretty much where it's going to be a really special you know setup and interview and it's going to be have a different element to it than this this is our home gym this is our home studio taylor's Mm -hmm. taylor's the homie love him to death and um love you taylor you know he's uh (laughs) he makes our show so much smoother and better we can never do what we do without taylor and we're going to be able to uh just add another element to the ministry to the show uh and we have a patreon and we've been uh asking people to partner with us on patreon for uh the last i would say six seven months now and uh we promised exclusive content and uh, we, we provided one really powerful episode on there that y'all would probably really like. And so would our listeners if they enjoyed this one, where we talked to uh, David Yuseta about uh, breaking the chains of pornography addiction from a man perspective who was actually a worship leader at my church for wow. years and was struggling with that sin uh, uh, while, you know, leading from the the worship stage so we had an incredible conversation and i released that exclusively when we re- released a patreon but now we're doing kind of a 2024 relaunch 
of the Patreon in a way of uh, being able to uh, provide exclusive content uh, mm -hmm. in a way where you can hear that episode at least a month early. And mm -hmm. that's going to be something that's so special. So if you guys want to join us on Patreon now before it comes out, that would be super helpful. It's partnering with us every single month, which is I know it could be a big commitment in this economy, but that's why we have options for as little as five dollars. So you, uh, yes. whatever the Lord leads you to uh, bless us with and to sow into and also reap the benefits of being a Patreon, you have a few different tier options, whichever the Lord leads you to. I ask you to uh, do that today so that you can see that episode and just see some other cool things that we have wor uh, worked up our sleeve for the rest of the year for the people that support us because yeah. um, we just need it. You know, we're uh, we're growing and we're trying to do some really cool things for God. And I just believe that uh, oh, glory to him. when when you have the um, the financial burden off your back, you're able to do those things. You know, so I humbly ask you to support us on there by going to either uh, Patreon dot com slash I like birds or you can go directly to the um, uh, support page on. on sorry, that that confused me when I saw that screen. So, yeah, you go to I like birds. <laughs> Do that little sound, that Taylor? Out. Yeah, cut that part out. Cut that part out. Uh, <laughs> you can go to patreon.com slash I like birds, or there will be an episode link in the description for you that says partner with us on Patreon. And that's the best way to do it. If you're uh, not feeling the whole, you know, monthly commitment, I understand. You can also sow a seed by going to I like birds ministry.com slash support. But to be real, I think you should join the Patreon so you can see that Charlie episode because it is yes. going to be fire. Mm -hmm. Like he shares. And that's the thing. He shares so many other stories that are like, mm -hmm. oh, my goodness. God has moved in this man's life. Yeah. Lost his mom, his son. Wow. Oh, I, yeah, I think he's all in the same that. month. And then he shares like a testimony about that season and how like he was in the psych ward because he was so distraught yeah. from um, wow. just losing everybody. And uh, just he was stuck in he was uh, falsely accused. Yeah, he was still in prison, right? Like yeah, falsely yeah. accused the, the second time for yeah. basically like. Uh, the trial went, man, you got to hear it. I don't want to give away too much, yeah, yeah. but you got to hear he that said, episode. He said, go to the Patreon. I'm going to Patreon. Y'all got to get there. But, uh, that's the only thing I wanted to share with you guys today because we're trying to really ramp up that. That's going to be something we're really uh, focusing on because there's uh, another really cool announcement that's coming on the other side of that uh, in a few short weeks of somebody that's partnering with us as well. So I think you'll want to be included in all the fun things we have going on here. I like birds and we couldn't do it without great supporters like y'all. So thank you so much yes, for tuning in and sharing awesome. the show. I see you share with your little tribe and stuff. Yes. And, of course. Uh, Abby even uh, took a picture one time listening in the car, and I was like, "All right, let's go." You know, yes. and, you, and you share the sh the show and the shirts and everything. So yeah, y'all. Hey, y'all. If y'all like this T-shirt I got on, uh, I'll tell you where I get it. I like birds. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Shameless plug. That's awesome. Hey, I, I and that it. book is hey. not too bad either. Hey. <laughs> Hey, no, I don't have the merch, but the book was good. <laughs> Thank you. And you actually gave it away to somebody, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Yeah, that was crazy. Faithfully, huh? <laughs> Somebody Holy Spirit-led. Yeah, tell me a, like, a little quick story about that for the people. So listening. I went to a coffee shop on my Sabbath. I don't leave the house on my Sabbath, but the Lord asked me to. And um, so I was eavesdropping on these guys' conversation, and he was like, he was trying to pick where he's going to do his next ministry at, like mission work. And he's like, I don't know if I'm supposed to go to Africa or to Scotland. And my whole body just got like, lit on fire. And before like this had happened, I prayed over my food and I was like, Lord, send me somebody. You got me out the house today. Send me somebody. Wow. And um, I thought it was going to be a non-believer. Like, you know, I was like, he's going to go extreme. <laughs> 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 and um, it was still extreme. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this guy was just talking about it and um, he's with another guy and they're just having a conversation. I'm like listening. He's like, dropping I, big time. Yeah, like staring at these. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> I could not pay attention to anything else. <laughs> So he goes up to leave and I'm like, hey, like this is weird. Like, <laughs> I'm already awkward. So yeah. like, I was like, hey, this is weird. But the Lord told me to give you this. <laughs> and I like handed it to him. And he was like, I would say this is a coincidence, but I don't believe in coincidences. And I was like, I was like, yeah, me neither. We don't believe in coincidence. <laughs> and so I sat back down because I didn't want to leave like right as he was leaving. Because mm -hmm. I was like, that's all the Lord asked me to do here. Like, I felt like I could leave after. Yeah. And I sat back down. He came over there. He was like, hey, like, where do you go to church? Uh, kind of talked. I don't know his name. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> his mom even came up and talked to me. 
That's awesome. But yeah, it was crazy. That's so cool. Well, thank you for sharing that with somebody. That's, course, that's super yeah. special. Mm -hmm. and, Dude, that's uh, awesome. It was great. Yeah, what a cool story, man. When this was an awesome episode. I'm so grateful that y'all came through. This is great. So yes. yeah, um, I'm excited. Bro, I want to yeah. come all time. This is so fun. <laughs> Can we just be on the pod when you don't have nobody else to be? <laughs> like, we, we, got more, we got more stories. You got more to say. Yeah, more. Yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, we'll keep that in mind for sure. But no, nah, big things are coming for y'all. And uh, I'm I'm grateful to have you on the team. And uh yeah, man. So for everybody listening, make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Uh, smash the like button, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. We truly appreciate you. Don't forget what we said about the Patreon. And if you did want to get a copy of the book, you can go to ilikebirdsministry.com. Uh, we have 21 Days in Africa on there. Sign copies. I'll send it straight to your house. Yes. Hey, or give it to you at church. Hey, or give it to you at church. You know, if you order, you know, I don't got to pay shipping. You know, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 let's go. Hey, you know what? You don't have to pay shipping. Just do promo code free, in the, and you'll get free wow, shipping on our code. website. Wow, he's I know. Just, just blessing, yo. Blessing. This blessing. Like I'm trying to trying to raise money and I'm giving away free stuff. <laughs> and you're telling us all this stuff on the Patreon. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Uh, whoops. Uh, but no, nah, that's what we do here. You know, we just uh, we provide value in multiple ways. But um, the Lord will provide. Yeah, He will. Exactly. That's the name of your podcast. He will provide. Yep. All right, yo. Uh, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Taylor. Thank you for letting us go a little long tonight. And we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget, I like the Bible and I like words, so I like birds. See you yes. next time. Bye. <laughs>